Almira, um, what do you think? Do you have a prediction for the matchup of today? Uh, well, you know, it's not easy to make predictions. You know, whenever you are going to be an oracle, you're going to be wrong. But <laughs> I think that um, taking into account the statistics and some mathematical edge, I think uh, Katerina Laglo is a slight favorite. Hmm. All right, we will so, see at the end if you are right. So if you are betting, <laughs> if you are betting, you know, like I, I don't know how to give you the odds, but <laughs> uh, but this match is going to be absolutely insane uh, because they have uh, styles which are a bit opposite. You know, Ekaterina Lagno has a more classical style, and she like increases a sl slight edge in their positions, and she has absolutely brilliant tactical vision. While Nana Jagnidze, she likes the cows on the board. So mm -hmm. she will try to unbalance the position uh, quite quickly if she can. All right, I'm looking forward. So guys, stay there because an exciting match is one of the most exciting format is going to start. We will be back after a very short break and the games are going to start in less than five minutes. So see you there.
And here we are. We are back and we are ready to follow the match between Katarina Lagno and Nana Zagnitze. Here we see the calm face of both players. They look, they are both in the identical position, just very focused and be ready. What do you think? Do we have a ritual before a chess game? Um, or how do I do, do you approach Almira? Well, actually, uh, well, I can see that both players are incredibly concentrated, you know, and I think that the ritual, especially for those who have kids, you know, and Katrina has four, Nana has two, is to close the door and to have <laughs> like 15 minutes of silence. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Doing, yes. <laughs> so the Grunfeld, Katerina Lagno is a very experienced Grunfeld player. Let's see if Nana is, has prepared some novelty. They're going for the classical line for the moment. So let's see, Queen A4. No. It's, it's, it's nice. a sideline Queen A4, I think. Yes, exactly. So I, would, I wanted to know if Nana is going to play like the classical line with Knight F3. Um, hmm. Katerina seems puzzled. What is the idea of this Queen A4? This well, sideline? Yeah, the sideline is actually, first of all, this knight d7, you know, after knight f3, you always have this uh, classical line with bishop g4. So this completely changes the, um, the, well, the spirit of the play, mm -hmm. which will happen later. You know, it's queen a4, there is no pin, the knight develops on f3. And then um, also, on the other hand, knight d7, c5 is a very typical plan. So maybe that's why queen a3, you see? That's why Nana prepared this. So I'm not sure if, um, ah, still C5. Okay, so <laughs> this must be some home preparation already because I'm not familiar with this line as well. So I will be learning with you. Yeah, and both players are playing extremely fast. So we have the feeling that they know exactly what to do. Also because C5 is moment is hanging a pawn right now. Of course, but um, look, because at some point I had uh, Nana looked puzzled, you know, she looked somewhere, you know, just players have this um, habit to look uh, somewhere like on the sky, on the ceiling, you know, what is going on? That's exactly what I wanted to say that C5, B6, and this time the bishop goes to B7 because what, bishop G4, of course, is no longer possible. So this all is absolutely uh, natural on both sides. I think d takes c5 was uh, simply a mistake because after queen c7, there was no real way to protect the spawn. And especially after bishop b3, you had b6. I mean, just if we can come back a little bit later, no, just before, before, uh, before yes, bishop b2. Yes, here, yes, here, queen c7, or you see, I think uh, this position is already quite dangerous. Bishop yeah. b3. Mm -hmm. Both pawns on, both pawns on the, on the c5 looks very weak and probably after bishop e3 uh, exactly. b6 and especially in grunfeld you really want to have this strong center so nana will keep it like she mm -hmm. did in the game so she played bishop b2 b6 let's mm -hmm. see what happened and okay. bishop b3 c takes d4 yes mm -hmm. this for me seems um rather balanced for the moment. Both sides are doing, uh, well, they continue with the most typical plans in this position. So let's see how, first of all, Nana will protect the pawn on e4. Yeah, yeah. And at some point, like yes, one thing, Alicia, I wanted to say that also the idea of this variation, queen e4, you know, in Greenfield, you attack the d4 pawn by playing knight c6. So one of the strategical idea of this position is that knight is on d7 and you know it's rather limited. So it will probably will have to go to uh, f6. So I'm thinking maybe knight d2 now. Mm -hmm. Nana played already knight d2? Yes, okay. Knight d2, knight f6, and then I can uh, simply play f3 and your bishop on b7 will be you know, knight, oh, knight c5. What a beautiful move. Yeah the, yeah, the knight is not hanging because the bishop on g7 is looking at the rook on a1. So, and the knight from c5 is, of course, targeting the pawn on e4. But oh. what's the difference according the to the difference between... is actually that on f3, I will probably play knight e6. This is a very interesting idea because you can no longer play d5, then I will still take your rook and you will have to deal uh, like with this pawn. And also, maybe after f3, I can still take on d4 immediately you know that's what i'm asking myself if there are no tactics after f3 i can take so e5 is forced hmm. beautiful beautiful knight c5 nice 
So knight e6, probably, yes, that's what was played. And how to protect the d4 pawn now? Hmm. G2 yeah, is also, also g2 is under yes. attack, yeah. So what to do? Knight f3, you can now, well, there could be a very long tactical line. Knight f3, um, bishop f3, bishop f3, knight d4, maybe you can still take on a8. But then knight c2, you lose the queen. Maybe this is possible. Knight f3, bishop f3. It's a, it's a not a natural decision, you know, to give up your bishop, but if the, tactically this decision is supported, then I can take bishop f3 and take on d4. So that's what happened, actually. You are the prophet, because exactly it, it happened exactly like this. So now black is a pawn off. Yes, and maybe black will also win the pawn on e5. I think that, okay, rook is hanging. So pawn on a7 is hanging, then pawn is 5 Maybe rook b8. So if you will take on a7, I will take on a5. And rook e1, then uh, rook d8. Hmm. Okay, so Queen black is completely ignoring, doesn't know, is not protecting, and it's actually also the pawn on a7. Yes, but that's what I'm telling. I'm thinking what pawn you should take actually here, a7, then on queen a5, but I can uh, play rook e1, take on a7. Mm, I think Nana is calculating actually which variation is best, queen a7 and then queen a7. Mm -hmm. But what I was thinking that uh, then maybe black can take on a1 and in this position two rooks will be much better than a queen probably. Mm -hmm. So let's say. Yeah, I think it will go exactly in this way. It seems like I'm curious to see what Nana uh, prepared after bishop take e5. Maybe queen a5 is more precise. I protect on e7. But on the other hand, that's why I wanted to play rook b8, and Nana can play queen b6, take the pawn. So mm -hmm. maybe bishop and it's better five. to give you is to give away the b6 pawn rather than the e7 pawn. Uh, no, it's better to give away, of course, the e7 pawn in this variation. Yes, but so bishop b5, we should start, and uh, maybe there is an intermediate rook a d1 on bishop b5. You see bishop mm -hmm. b5, rook a d1 now. So you will have to play queen c5. Okay, the opposite color bishops still give white very good chances for a draw in this game. So um, let's see. Maybe rook b1, also possible rook a b1. Yeah. So removing the queen, the rook for the, for the target and also looking at the pawn on. On B6. Yes, on b6, but then rook b1, rook g6, you know, maybe uh, maybe Nana missed this move. I can protect the pawn. Mm -hmm. So this is also, and this is a very, very nice position for the rook. So Nana plays rook d1. But oh. uh, what I don't understand is the computer analysis, yes, she missed queen a4, so she is losing like in one move, she com she blundered. Oh, and we have a oh knight on the board. Yes, this is a huge blunder for white. Yeah. Just show maybe that after g3 we could take on f3. So there was no, absolutely no defense after queen f4. Yeah, incredible. So let's see e4, c5, neither for maybe on oh, c 6 Okay, let's see what Nana has prepared for this match. Mm -hmm. This maybe. this this format is in some way brutal because you really have to rematch immediately after a game. So it's really you don't have time to to recover from the shock of a loss mm -hmm. and but you need immediately to make a breath and go on exactly i've never played under such pressure i have to admit already uh, well i've played a few armageddon's games and i know that uh, like my hands are shaking so i cannot even imagine what uh, the players are feeling at the well at this moment of course that's only beginning of the match but i wanted to say that first in this game it started with a four knight sicilian katerina lagno choose knight db5 uh, which transposed after nana's choice to the sveshnikov sicilian and uh, because here actually well they had a lot of options nana could have played bishop before uh Ekaterina could take on c6 you know could have taken on c6 mm -hmm. so this is actually is one of the calmest positions the structure is very simple to understand um 
white is always fighting for the d5 square for the control of the d5 square bishop h6 is a very good move actually because you simply want to exchange this bishop and to take on a three this is one of the strategical ideas of this opening h4 is also very typical she even castles now so she will probably take on e3 after h5 mm -hmm. And so white has a strong knight on the d5 square and now he's trying to open up the h5. Oh, she uh, doesn't want, she wants to, Nana wants to keep this bishop. Okay, she's afraid that when I will open the um, h file, yes. But I, I cannot see an easy way to transfer the queen because queen f3, queen h3 is not possible, queen h5 is not possible. Another strategical idea for white would be to play g3 here, c3 and g3, and to develop the bishop on g2, or on e2, or bishop h3 even. I need to exchange for white, it would be very important to exchange the light color bishops. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, because uh, he's controlling the d5 square. Mm -hmm. Compared to the um, classical Sveshnikov Sicilian, there is a very big difference that uh, normally black play b5. That's the huge difference. Here, as you can see, you know, the pawn is on b7. So mm -hmm. the only weakness, strategical weakness here in the position, in black's position, is the pawn on d6. Mm -hmm. Rook c8, also. Is a very nice move. Another positional idea which could be used here, and I'm, uh, I'm, I was wondering why Nana didn't play knight e7 because you see I'm trying to hold on my grip on d5, but knight e7 simply forces you to exchange something here. So I would have played. I was also a Sveshnikov player myself in the past, so I really like this position. So then you exchange, then you play f5. And you actually fight for the initiative. Yeah, yeah. I mostly I played this with white, mm -hmm. um, and I always liked the idea of trying to get the control of the d5 square. But as you were telling, um, can become very extremely dynamical after a five, and black has the bishop. So if the position is opening up, um, they they can be very strong. Of course, the dream is to play knight against the dark color bishop that is very passive on e seven maybe, and then white can attack on several points. And but we are far away from that. Of course, and as you can see, Nana immediately when I, when I told her that she when she has the possibility to play for the initiative, she sees this immediately. And uh, very often she will sacrifice one pound, two pound for the initiative. She likes very much to sacrifice the exchange, like positional sacrifice, especially in the Sicilian. So here, actually, I think she, she well, as a Sveshnikov player, I think she, the, her position is actually very nice. You have this avalanche of pawn. I'm not sure about this e4 move because she wants to play e4 and knight e5. I can understand this. But do I have some intermediate with queen h5 here? Mm. I was not sure, you know, queen h5, maybe rook h8, yes? But um, I'm always... The queen looks... Yes. Looks very aggressive there, but you risk maybe some discovery attack. Yes, you're no, no, but after queen h5, rook h8 was not possible because I could take on f5, you know, maybe sacrifice the bishop on d3 oh, yeah. with some crazy attack, you know. But this is blitz. The you see, there are a lot of uh, uh, moves that you are making instinctively, you know the plans. It's not so easy to calculate everything. And as we have seen in the first game, Nana blundered like almost uh, after the opening. You know, she, I think she was disappointed with her position. It didn't go her way. And, you know, she simply, well, after Queen of Four, she was losing the piece. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Rook H8. And the position looks a mess right now. The king is on g7, he's exposed. Also, the white king is on e1 still. So no player is really a safe king. I would say that white king is not really in danger right now uh, because it's not, not a possibility to attack. But if the pawns f and d are starting to be pushed, uh, can be can be dangerous. Am I am trying to find the right way for white to long castle. You know, it's not so easy because even if you long castle with this bishop on h6, which Nana kept, then you can play 
F4, you know, and these pawns are very mobile. So then F3 and uh, you will lose your queen if you will put it in E2. Mm -hmm. So this actually explains uh, why Katerina Lagno is still thinking. There is, for me, there is no clear way, you know, to castle here. She, she has to be very precise. Uh, I'm thinking about some crazy move here, like G4, but it doesn't really work, I think. It looks very dangerous. Um, yeah, but it's also, yeah, she's putting a Ah, she G1, played rook so G1 with this me. idea, exactly. Yeah. But as you as you said, this is not so easy to find a place for uh, for the king right now because the one looks really dangerous. But then I'm asking myself, like if I play knight e5 right now, g4 is met by knight f3. And as well, this position is of course is a total mess, complete chaos, and Nana feels uh like a fish, you know, in the water. <laughs> That's <laughs> her position, it suits her style very well. So 95 was played, and now really, I don't know. I, I really queen think Queen d4 that now? Queen d4, but then you can, well, you cannot play f4 anyways. So after queen d4, maybe um, I can somehow improve the position of my king. Maybe then I can play king f7. Then I think after queen d4, king f7. So f4. This is such a responsible move. If you take on passant, of course, G e takes f3, g takes f3 is check. Yes. And then king f7, you um, f4 once again, but queen h4. Oh my god, this starts to be very unclear. Yeah, this looks crazy. As you said, none is really going for the mess. So rook g2. Queen h1, and then uh, king, well, they will exchange queens after king f2, I suppose. One good point of this f4 g3 is now the bishop, is that now the bishop on h6 is blocked. So actually, uh, the king could theoretically also go towards that side. But the king is going to f2 to support um, all the pieces there around. King on f2 is actually very safe right now. You very rightfully said that uh, for, well, since black couldn't take on f3, this f4 g3 just simply gives uh, um, such safety to white's king. And then after knight g4, I will simply take knight g4 and uh, these pawns will fall, e4 pawn will fall. Okay, now actually I think that before I thought that black was better, but you really need to keep your queens on the board. So it, it's a big achievement for white, you know, to exchange the queens here. Yeah, now the pawn on d6 looks really um, still weak. And do you think is white going for g4, opening up the g file? Uh, not for the moment, because, you know, then it will open this h6 bishop, as you said before, you know, uh, now these bishops are, are not looking that great, you know, even though, <laughs> because from the strategic point, point of view, white achieved everything. They have the grip on d5, they limited the, um, uh, the bishop's activity, and later on, yes, when uh, white will prepare their plan, maybe put the king on e3, protect on e4, then play g4, and... Uh, Oh, even g4 now. So you see, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes to my variation, yes. So maybe she will take now, yes, with knight, and then e5 pawn. f5 um, pawn. But actually, you see, uh, Ooh, because... Oh, tactic. Yes, tactically, it was not really supported. Because yeah. I think white uh, maybe had to prepare this g4 push. So, yeah, that's true. I, I have the feeling, but still, it's blitz, and Katerina has only twenty, like twenty seconds left. Ah, but Nana is yeah, well. both in, in big yeah. time trouble. Yeah, and here there is um, so black has because yes, rook h three. Oh my god, king goes to the center. Rook f four. Uh, so black is a pawn up, and the pawn on g four is uh, is protected by the bishop. Um, you're, but you're why, does this, right. yes. why does this king that is very central, uh, do you think that in this position the king is weak or is a strong piece? 
Well, for the moment, actually, the king needs to, to worry about the g pawn, and that's exactly why Katerina plays rook e3. So, um, you, of course, you need to activate your king, but you also need to, uh, well, to stop the pawn from the promotion and maybe mm -hmm. to win it. So, to double on the g file, she wants to play rook f3. Um, she seconds. wants actually, yeah, she wants to hold this position in an active way. So she doesn't want to. Ah, she forgot about rook h2. Uh, I think oh, black. No. She will convert, but she has only two seconds. Yeah, she not the first. other rook. You know, I feel these games like I was playing, like I'm playing myself. You know. <laughs> no, it's so really, it's so hard to see this because both player I have really one second. They are making a move with 0 0.5, 0. Point, it's crazy. And now oh, no, no, White managed to thing, take yeah. the pawn. And this means that White is now a pawn up and White will try to push here. Of course, now Katerina will try to convert. She's given such an unexpected chance. And now, especially in these positions, you know, you can probably make some free moves, you know, and try. She needs to advance her king now, king d3, maybe. Yeah, and try to get more time on the clock because we saw that with time everyone can do lots of blunders. And Anna has really very few time, but now she can give us lots of check, and so she can maybe have a bit more time. But she's not pre moving, she's still on one second, point seven. Oh my god, this is so difficult. I know myself how difficult it is when you're you have so little time, but this is a draw now is incredible she moved with 0 0.2 and now she lost some time oh my god you know so she forgot about time <sighs> again so well katerina for the moment she dominates even though they this time the opening didn't go her way so grunfeld once again uh let's see maybe knight of three this time Oh, there are a lot of lines now. Queen a4, she still goes for probably she has prepared this line, you know, for the blitz match. And also, let's not forget that these players will meet in the candidates tournament later mm -hmm. in the year. So sometimes you do not reveal your preparation in, in the blitz match. They are very careful, even though they are playing for such uh, incredible prize fund. Yeah, just I see on the layout that. The news that Lagno and Grishok are the strongest chess couple in the world. It's incredible how strong uh, and how high the rating is, no? Yes, exactly. Uh, actually, once I've asked myself, like, when is this uh, couples world championship is going to be organized? Because there are a lot of strong car uh, couples in the world and they are just amazing blitz players, you know? Just uh, so a, few, a few names pop in, like uh, Anish Giri and Sophie Kod and uh, Alexandra Kostinyuk and Pavel Trigubov. You have Alina Kashlinska, Radislav Vaitashik. Uh, Daniel Friedman and Anna Zatonsky and I, you know, there is a plethora, you know, of these beautiful couples and so this would be very interesting to see, but let's have a look. This time Nana put the bishop on d3 and Katerina still plays knight c5. Yeah. You know, during the tournament, you have time to improve on your variation, so you quickly switch on the computer, even if you have like 10 minutes break, you can improve, you can well, look, have a look at the recent opening theory. You can uh, switch on the computer. You, you can have your coach to give you an advice. In this format, it is simply not possible. So she already thought like after the game, okay, what would be better? And then bishop d3, knight c5, she leaves her this bishop, you know, on priest. So knight d3, queen d3, she goes for this line. So here you can improve and a game just by yourself with your own mind, but it's kind of a nice way also, because if not, sometimes a battle of stockfish, but like this, you, you have to find a solution yourself. So of course there is a known, a known preparation that is valuable, but in a way it's exciting that you have to figure out a solution yourself. Actually, that's the way uh, like the old school works. Like I'm the classical representative of this old school. <laughs> so uh, very often I analyze, I try to, uh, to analyze it from the human point, human perspective. And then, uh, well, I switch on the computer and then the computer says, tells me, oh, you're blunder in the rook. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here it's more about uh, positional ideas. So I think the, um, these players are so strong. So they are able to improve on their own game within two seconds. 
she understands like where the game went wrong and she decides to go for this position okay this is once again balanced and actually i think that nana had this idea in the previous game she wanted to play h4 that's why she put the bishop in e2 maybe delay castling and castling in an artificial way so uh even here she still tries to play the h4 h5 was probably not sure if it's forced but now have a look at this um, position the strategic idea for black uh, for white would be to play bishop e5 to exchange this bishop and then maybe even have some some advantage some small edge so i'm really curious if nana will play bishop b5 here or queen e3 bishop h6 there are two ways mm -hmm. And bishop e5 is played. And what do you think should should black do here? Should change place the bishop on e6 looks a bit risky. Mm -hmm. Actually, and... I'm already questioning the move h5. You should be really careful with those moves. You know, I'm not sure maybe h6 was preferable. Um, but still, you know, queen a4 is a very good move because you, as you can see, well, a2 is hanging, but they can still play rook a1 and take on a7. But in this position, you need to exchange the queens once again. Mm -hmm. So maybe, and you need to control the queen d4 as well. So queen a4 is a very good move. Um, so how to continue here? e takes d5, takes on d5, maybe queen c4 immediately or rook d8. Rook d8 was played. So both options are... Uh, very interesting, I, I guess. And there is no way for white to put the queen on this long diagonal. I was thinking about queen d2, queen b2. But uh, after d6, uh, you see, let's say bishop f3 becomes possible as well. So if your queen moves, then your structure will be horrible. Yeah, and what do you think about the pawn on d6? So this pawn is a pass pawn. It's mm -hmm. two steps for becoming a queen. Um, is it a weakness? Can can be like attack it more times and capture it, or is a pawn that is making all the black pieces passive in order to avoid that you can advance? What do you think about this pawn? Well, it could be both actually. It's a double-edged pawn, if I can say. For the moment, it's a very uh, impressive pass pawn, and especially for blitz, I, I would I would uh, think that it's more an advantage. But here especially like from a rational point of view it can be attacked for example black rooks are blocking it then i can also take one of three play rook c6 um so rook e7 is very nice so i would probably play rook bishop takes f3 now so you have to take one of three yeah and after this the uh the end game if if white is going to change the queens yeah it has if black is going to change the queens then I think this end game. It's not so sure. So queen of three, g takes f3. Now rook c6 is probably met by d7, and I simply threaten rook e8. You know, so you have to be careful. Yeah. And on the other hand, you have this maneuver rook d4, rook f4. You know, you also have to be careful about this. I can give up hmm. my pawn, but then I, I will double on the sevens and then like king h6 is rook h7 mate already so this is also possible and even possible after rook d, after d7 rook at d4 rook f4 so mm -hmm. g7 now and ah, the, for queen, example I, the king might go might get to f6 at one point attacking the rook and then black might be able to capture the pawn exactly but after d7 i think uh, katerina wanted to play rook e6 so now mm -hmm. it's going to be a draw that's why nana took on a7 and uh well, black has a better structure, but okay, it's it's an equal ending. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here should be uh, both players have more than enough time, and here is very easy to make safe free move. So should but you not know, be. You know, Lisa, I think that maybe black will try. She will play king f6, king e6, then f6. No, she goes like for the h4 pawn. Okay, uh, maybe yes. From the practical point of view, this is a better try, but still, it doesn't change the evaluation of the position. I but want still, to try to this bring looks thing. like uh, you know the pawn on f f three f two is, is like they are one pawn, mm -hmm. so it feels like black might have some chances by pushing pawns. At least try to put pressure on black. Probably it should be of objectively course. a draw. But it's very nice in chess, especially with so few time. Uh, 
um, I say mostly that in, in, this, uh, in this time control, even a small hedge can be a huge advantage because it might allow you to make faster move and to, to put always pressure to the opponent. And if you always have to defend, always to defend, always to think, um, you cannot do two active moves, then suddenly you might get in trouble. You're absolutely right, Alicia. And you know, one uh, thought that I, uh, that I had is that when you're defending those endings or you are defending a slightly worse ending, well, okay, both players are like so strong that I am not doubting their theoretical knowledge, but sometimes you can simply forget that one position could be a theoretical draw and not go for it when you are having two seconds, you know? So that's the difficulty. When you have, like in a classical game, you have time to figure out like one or two minutes, you go for this position, you know, this is a theoretical draw. What this is much more difficult than blitz. Mm -hmm. So, no, well, I here agree. I really, I really think that the game will end in a draw, but I also know that when it comes down to one second here, we have enough time, like nerves play a very important role. Yeah, and now it looks like, it seems like white is risking to get in a zoot zone because black, if, if white is removing the rook, black might consider to put a rook on f4 mm -hmm. and maybe to take on f3 if possible. And then if many pawns are, if another pawn is taken, then g4 can be pushed. So I'm curious to see. King f4. Yeah, and of yeah. course, if white is attacking the pawn on, f, on f6, White can even consider to push f5, but now can black take on f3? Yes, but I'm wondering rook f3, rook f8, uh, then h3 check. She starts with h3 check, okay. Oh, beautiful, because now maybe white, black can take maybe both pawns with the king and then f2 with check. And if rook f8, oh no, the pawn on h a6 would be... But, yes, but now, as you can see, the position completely changes. Uh, 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 so I think now black is winning because, but you need to be careful that in that variation, actually, rook f3, I think rook f8 could have saved, saved uh, white. So now. Um, oh, I would have played gf5, actually. F5, yes, I like the, the move f5. You're absolutely right. Because it seems like that then you can grab the pawn on f2 with check. But f5, then rook f8 probably was the move. And then what do you do? Oh, I would have taken on, on f2 with check. Mm -hmm. And then maybe rook f3. Yes, but then I simply I simply promote. That's the problem. You ah, always have to be careful because the pawn <laughs> already get to the so And then, uh, yes, in these variations, you always have to be very careful. Uh, just not to lose a tempi. So I'm pretty sure there was a very precise variation. We can even have a look at uh, this position like after we will finish this portion of the match because uh, I think it's uh, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you can see now, uh, the king went to g6 and now rook f8, you make a draw. So Nana saved the game. Yeah. So. Yeah, now should be should be a draw. But incredible how an equal game, uh, an equal position can still be very difficult to. to so are defend. we? Are we? Yes. Are we going to have a thematical match today? Yes, the Grunfeld and the Sveshnikov. Let's yeah, see. I think that once the time control change, mm -hmm. um, we might see some new openings. You see, that's what I said. She doesn't go for the main line b5, and Anna Jagnidza, she goes for this uh, bishop b6, which actually became uh, very popular lately. A lot of mm -hmm. the, uh, the recent developments in the series, which is uh, considered to be, it could actually start with um, e5 first, not knight c6, knight of 65. Um, the uh, yes, the Kalashnikov Sicilian. And um, the, the main idea is that you uh, economize the tempi on b5, and very often in the Sveshnik of b5 is the, could be exploited. You play a4, and then uh, bishop takes, like b takes a4, rook a4, you pawn on a6 is hanging. So this is the main positional advantage from this move order. Mm -hmm. Well, they go for the same position. It seems yeah. that uh, both players are quite happy with the uh, 
uh, the opening um, phase. So King G7 was played in the first game. Let's see if Nana changes something here. Yeah, basically after F5, um, we got to the position where actually Black was uh, was doing really great. So. Yes, for the moment, yes, Nana needs to play King G7 to protect the, if she doesn't want to play Bishop E3, mm -hmm. uh, she needs to play King G7, and uh, she's probably wondering uh, why on earth Katerina is playing the same variation once again, <laughs> because she was much better. <laughs> she's afraid that uh, maybe she like blundered something on the way. So. Oh, she figured out something else. So Bishop D3. Hmm. And now are we expecting f5? Actually, what I'm thinking, sometimes when you play f5, you can sacrifice on the five and uh, you have this queen g4 and you win the piece back. But here you always have uh, queen g5. So you see, Nana plays knight e7, the idea that I mentioned in the first game. Yeah. I was wondering why she didn't play knight e7 and uh, rook c8. So uh, this is, uh, I think, a more precise strategical idea here. This, especially after bishop d3. As you can see, I can no longer take knight d5, knight d5, and queen d5. You want to take with the piece on d5 when you exchange all these things. Yeah, because after you take with the pawn, you can start to advance easily f5, f4, even e4. You can, um, and the pawn on d6 is no longer uh, a problem, it's no longer weak. So um, it's a bit a dream for, for Black to get that position with the pawn on d5 and start to push a 5 uh, e4 if possible. Well, I feel that Nana is always getting better positions out of this opening. I really like the way she plays it. And uh, it's not so easy to create, uh, well, you need to castle long here with white. So, but how to do this? once again in, a, uh, in an elegant manner because I really think that queen f3 would be met here by f5 with some devastating initiative. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Again, it's not so easy to place the king in a, in a, two. In a so safe think, place. And you can no longer castle because you see this bishop on g5 simply doesn't give you the possibility to castle. How do you castle? Yeah. A monster. So how do you connect your rooks? Because in order to have a perfect attack with white, you need to connect your rook, your rooks. Mm -hmm. So f5, knight e3. Hmm. Uh, Katerina needs to be careful. Where is this knight yeah. going? Well, I think it should go back to d5, but uh, after bishop d5, he takes d5. You already explained that uh, this is uh, this position is uh, much easier to play for black. Yeah, I agree. You really need to take with the piece. I would say that another positional idea that I mentioned would be to play bishop c4 and to exchange this white square bishop. So maybe... Um, it could be possible, but for example, uh, if we make some move and I play bishop c4, then I like just make a random move like b6, careful, like b6, then bishop c4. I think that bishop b3 probably works here. You know, there is some tactic, bishop takes on e3, the knight, and then you see that's why probably this idea, how do you take bishop b6, I have bishop mm. f2 check, you know, just yeah. show you the variation. So bishop b6, bishop f2, you see? So this is maybe some tactical justification, but who knows? Yeah, and, and now white is forced to take back and then the queen will take here. But don't cannot use the h file. You need to connect your rooks, you need to castle. So let's see what, uh, what happened in the game. Yeah, let's see. Yes, because, you know, oh, she's still thinking, Nana, you see? Uh, and knight d5. Oh, you know, wow. knight. Mm -hmm. So now we have again another opposite color bishop, but there are rooks and queen on the board. And mostly here, um, when, there, when there are opposite color bishop, the position is far away from being a draw because uh, for the moment, each side has an extra piece on one color of the board. So black is having one extra piece on the uh, dark square, and white is having an extra piece on the... Um, um, light square so 
I, I, my coach always told, told me to attack, attack, attack. The initiative is important in this kind of position because you can attack your opponent with an extra piece. On Please one tell side me who, who was this wise man? Who, who is your coach? <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, you're absolutely right. And especially here, the, the opposite color bishops end games with um, heavy pieces. You have still have queens and rooks on boards. Uh, what is the most important is the activity of your bishop. And I still have the feeling that once again, um, there was a critical moment during the game. Nana was thinking for a while. And I think that she failed to find, you know, maybe the most... Um, uh, concrete like principled continuation she went for this line as you can see white can all, still cannot castle but it's easier now to defend with white this position mm -hmm. and even to seize the initiative i'm wondering e3 probably f4 yes here yeah Maybe incredible four. e3 seems so crushing but after f4 yeah um the queen is still still looks safe there and you even, yes, you need to play e3, f4, and now you have this queen h3, queen h7 threat. You know, this is getting, once again, very messy. Um, but please, look at the time. Katerina has 2 minutes, 53 seconds. It's absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's incredible, incredible. And we saw that even if they are extremely strong player, when the time uh, gets few everyone can blunder everyone so b5 in order to undermine the, the bishop on d5 a little yeah. bit but she wants on b takes c4 play uh, rooks rook h1 the rook a h1 and with the threat rook h7 so queen f6 i really like this move so she looks also on the pawn on b2 i think that what nana wants it to sacrifice the exchange rook d5 and queen b2 you know, simply winning. Mm -hmm. so oh, this looks you, beautiful. You need and to yeah, I like this move. And I think that white can hide his king on g2. Yeah. It can be it's... can be an idea. Even if f2 needs to be covered. Okay, she didn't go for the exchange. No, no, she couldn't now because I think uh, rook h7 mm -hmm. was winning. But, uh, well, she needed to calculate, but she's very short on time right now. So maybe rook d5 was still possible, but after rook h7, uh, okay, there were a lot of uh, critical lines. Uh, but I got to say, after bishop, f ah, bishop f6 sadly doesn't work. Yes, you have this rook h7. Again, because after, if there would not be rook h7, it would be... Rook h7 and rook f7, mm -hmm. we need to say that uh, not only rook h7 check, but after king f8, rook f7, and I win the piece on f6. Yeah, so that's why rook e7 was played. Now one pair of rook got exchanged, but maybe white is getting now an active position. Oh, white is, I think, is much better. Maybe I can take on f3. Mm -hmm. uh, Katerina is thinking... But bishop f3, now I have bishop f6 and bishop b2. Even rook mm -hmm. c2. Okay, why not? Um, maybe, yes, because bishop f6 could be met with king d5 and I bring my king even closer, threatening some mate in the endgame. King d6, king e6. So that's why Nana played rook c2. Both pawns are hanging. I have two, b2. She wants to play... Uh, where to transpose for Katerina? This is a very interesting question. She wants to play bishop g4 and rook yeah, d7. Bishop g4, maybe rook d7, at taking the pawn on d6. Then okay. all the pawns are... are Hanging, uh, yes. Hanging, but yes. Still, rook d6. I will probably play rook b2. Then I know, rook d6, maybe I have even better option, rook f6. I need to transpose into the opposite color bishop endgame, just one yeah. pawn. So rook d6 is probably met by rook f6. And, so maybe uh, rook, she will play maybe rook b7 if she wants to keep the tension. That's why she's thinking right now. Maybe she missed, like, in her calculation rook f6, and she needs, like, it's very nice like she's that she's still thinking rook d2 is even better yes okay we forgot yeah. about rook d2 <laughs> a bit forced yes this is a simple draw 
Uh, this should be a simple draw because the important here is to put the pawn in the same color of your bishop, which is mostly counterintuitive, but in this way, you're always able to protect them. And on the other hand, like if you sacrifice your bishop for all the pawns, of course, and you stay like with an h pawn, then the bishop of the wrong color. So you need to find the plan how to sacrifice the bishop. Mm -hmm. or to bring your king closer. So Katerina will try to create a passed pawn and now she needs to bring uh, her king to the B pawn, closer to the B pawn. Yeah, and she's, she's getting there. And okay, now after king c6, the problem is that uh, b4 needs to be supported by the king. Mm -hmm. Okay, now should be an easy draw because I think uh, the bishop can just be placed on any diagonal and I take the think. pawn. Take, of course, yes, and then. Yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> ah, they need, uh, like, according to the blitz rules, they need to play it, so yes, till, till the end. You, is there a draw offer possible or not? Um, I'm not sure. I think we will have the reply um, after this break because the we, we they have still 30 minutes of this five plus one. I'm really curious to see how the preparation will change after the short break that we're gonna take because they have a bit of minutes to, to find a way to put pressure on the opponent. So we are going to wait a short break, be right back. And we are going to continue with five plus one, Nana against Katerina Lagun.
And here we are, we are back and we are ready to go for the second part of the five plus one. There are about 30 minutes to go and Katerina, Lagna, and Nana are ready. You see, they are uh, focused, probably looking. Do you think they are looking some lines or do you think they did some preparation? They called shortly their coach. Let me say, you know, actually, that's what I wanted to tell you. You know, when I was playing uh, some poker tournaments, this five minutes this was so called like bathroom break. But mm -hmm. now I actually thought what the players are doing, and I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, they like they had a look at some opening lines. It is very precious. It could make a crucial difference in the match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I played this exact um, format. And I also did the, the opening preparation in the middle because I have my boyfriend is a grandmaster. So I just exit the room and he said, you need to play this instead of this, instead of this. So it was fantastic. <laughs> and please have a look. The Nana doesn't go for the critical line of the Greenfield once again. She goes from some sidelines. Uh, like the advantage of playing in this way to choose this move order is that you are not going for the concrete lines immediately from the opening. You avoid the preparation of the, your opponent. It also gives you the opportunity not to plunder immediately because you, when you have to calculate some critical line and your opponent is better prepared, then, you know, in blitz, uh, it, well, it's a tough uh, choice, you know, so. Uh, so Nana is going for double fianchetta. What does it mean? That you put your bishops both on b2, on g2. And mm -hmm. uh, now, as you can see, uh, Katerina once again has chosen the principal line. She played e5. The pawn is on priest, but you cannot take it. So knight e5 is met by knight g4. Just yeah. And this looks like a very extremely symmetrical structure. Three pawn and four pawns on, on the board. And there is just one open file in this the D file. So I guess it's very important to try to get control. Um, but as you said, bishop is going to go to G2. Probably we are going to have also a knight to C3. Mm -hmm. um, do you think here white is going to castle or to keep the king in the middle? Maybe on E2, for example. No, no, white needs to castle on this because, you know, as you can see, uh, black didn't play C6 in this position. So I will very quickly play knight c6 so what's going on so what what's what she will do after knight g4 uh this is very interesting because like in my files i can also share some <laughs> preparation <laughs> with you knight g4 you can show this move yes it is it yeah uh, so and after can... f4 for example but then you know, look at the structure i will exchange i will take my pawn back yes i'll take on e5 uh and then maybe even play rook e8 take it back Yes, bishop b5, rook e8. Yeah, and this pawn is very weak. And then also the pawn on e2 is not connected to the other pawns. And hmm. sometimes you can be, if I may say, fooled by the computer, you know, evaluation because uh, because computer has so many defensive resources that she, he can say, well, what, whatsoever, I will play on. But in blitz and especially in a human opposition, it's very difficult to play those positions. So let's see what. Um, yeah, the only thing that I see in this position is that if that if the knight gets to d five, can start to look a bit um, a bit uh, weak because without the bishop, the dark scholar bishop, uh, there are lots of square that looks a bit weak. But I can always play c six. You know, this mm -hmm. is the huge advantage of this position that my c seven pawn has not moved. So what did she play, actually? Let's, see, let's go Just to the current. 96 has been played. Nine, Just one move. Hmm. It's interesting. So uh, she plays for the initiative. She plays knight a6 with the idea of playing knight b4. Yeah. And but, actually, it's not that is investing lots of time here. She's already under three minutes. And she played here the move knight c3. How is she going to face the move knight b4 here? Actually, you know, knight before, yes, is a very, uh, well, easy threat of knight c2, then rook c1 is forced. But now I, I understood that Nana wanted to play on knight g4, knight g3, and the bishop would be protected. Okay, so white is a pawn up, but um, I would say that black pieces are so active that it compensates the this pawn, the lack of the pawn. You see that now bishop g2. Mm -hmm. And also after knight c2, uh, the king is um, forced to go to f1. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's smart to, to, to make 
uh, white lose a tempo here uh, to to avoid that white can castle? Do you think? Yeah, actually, yes. That's what the, the move I was looking at. I was while you were asking me a question, I was looking at rook e8, and I was thinking because you need to put rook e8, rook d8. You need to. On the other hand, I. Katerina chooses this move knight g4, which we used in another variation, because now that I played f4, once again, your pawns are quite weak. So that would be a very good exchange, knight g4, bishop g4. And also knight d3 coming with check, you know, because the e2 pawn was pinned. Actually, this position once again has changed, has changed the, um, the character dramatically. So um it seems incredible see. that uh at the beginning we it, it seems really a very symmetrical nearly boring position and we always get into a complete mess so basically we went for the same type of structure as we were analyzing before but as you can see white is two pounds up in this position not one pound up so you have to be really very careful you have to find you with black pieces you always have to find the move which puts your opponent under pressure don't forget if i will manage to exchange a few pieces i will be two pounds up in the in an end game yeah and now um rook d1 was of course forced because mm -hmm. the rook has no other uh square um but now again if the knight gets to d5 um it start to feel also if four can be uh, is possible at one point short castle this something position... something went wrong for black you see how difficult it is because uh, these are the types of positions which you like very easily play in classical chess where you have time so you develop your initiative of course on the same like truth to be told like it's also very difficult to play with white because you can blunder at any moment so you see, it's a very double edge. You need to play for the initiative, but you have in mind that you are two pounds down, and you always have this pressure, like on you. You need to well, you need to find moves. You need to fight for the initiative, and you also need to look for the pounds. You have to get them back at some point. And here, yeah. I feel something went terribly wrong for Katerina Lagnosh. Like there was a critical point in the game which she missed. I was also calculating it, but uh, now I feel that um, f5 is give. Oh, <laughs> is not giving a pawn. Let's show this on yeah, the board. Bishop three, yes, and knight c two, yes, of course. Yeah, it's a let's beautiful. It, yes. Let's let's go back because it's a beautiful mate. Right. Look, bishop e three. The bishop are already nearly giving a checkmate. There is still king to e one, and then the knight is going to c two and is giving a beautiful checkmate. So f5 was so tricky yes and as you can see you have to find you have to fight till the very end so these ideas you have to spot them immediately you know well if there is a trick you have to go for it but unfortunately nana went for knight d5 and knight f6 and she's completely winning right now mm -hmm. so you see actually she changed her approach she didn't go for for the classical greenfield and it paid off she's going to win this game yeah she has now a very nice position and also we started that um nana was already under three minutes and katarina lagno had a good time advantage and now the time is again very similar do you think she's, she's no, going for the exchange to... she will take the exchange and also i wanted to sh well just to point out this bishop on h3 you know it's not doing much also you know after f5 yeah yeah it's a bit so blocked. you should go she's also thinking maybe she can play knight d7 and take the b8 rook you know you have two possibilities you can do yeah. another fork or maybe take on h7 first then try to call, go back uh, take on h7 then i will have a king f7 so that's uh and ah, rook bishop d5 Ah. You see, rook d7, I still had like rook e7, but bishop d5, no, she went for the rook, yes. Maybe um, a more practical approach because she is um, losing for the moment in the match, so she needs, even like for the boost of confidence, she needs to win this game like in a practical way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's remind everyone the current score uh -huh. is 3-1 with a two victory for Katerina and two draws. 
So it's really important to to strike for Nano. Oh my God, Rook H7, I think wins on this spot. Yes, you you will need you will not be able to protect the two bishops. Yes. Mm, yeah, looks really really very very strong. Oh, she's going for Bishop D5. Oh, she wants it all actually, Nano. She doesn't want the two bishops. She <laughs> she wants to play Rook F7. King g8, rook c7, and then maybe rook e7 also to exchange everything to go for the a very simple end game. Okay, c6, uh, c6 is played. I feel like I would have played probably rook take it seven. I like material, I like to have a good material advantage. But I think everything is pretty good here. But now rook f7 and rook e7 transposes, so that's what that's what happened. Um um, she has an extra rook yeah. here. So bishop e3 is a threat, bishop c1, okay, well played. And bishop c5, she will simply play e3. And once again, uh, look at this bishop on h3. It's like black is playing not only in exchange down, but with this bishop on h3 also another piece down. Yeah, exactly. Let's see. Um, I think this is going to, I mean, Nana is eight seconds, but I think here with increment is not in control. The, I really like this uh, one second increment uh, because you never, you're never going to lose a game on time. Your opponent is never going to flag you if you're clearly winning. But in some ways, time is still very important because if there is a messy position with just one second of increment, it's very hard to find a way to to find a good move you're absolutely right it's also sort of um, an equilibrium you know because some players they play quickly but sometimes in a superficial manner so they have more time some players try to make the best move in the position but they're they're always in the time trouble and then if there would be more increment then you know it will be easier for them to solve their trouble like time trouble problems so i agree with you this one second increment doesn't allow you to capitalize on it so there is always a time trouble you know i know which one is the trick to win every game you need to play extremely good and extremely fast, and then you win everything. And look at the board, <laughs> what happened now? You know, Nana misplayed it completely. She will lose once again. No, I mean, uh, it's a wow. miracle. Actually, what happened is a complete miracle, and uh, Katerina is now playing for a win. How important it is not to lose um, your fighting spirit. She was trying to to well to fight to def to find the defensive ideas and it actually paid off in the end. Black is it's completely incredible. Winning now. Yeah. Actually, how difficult it is to win a game against Katerina Lagno. Now you can see it. Yeah, it's that's, really absolutely. That's incredible. why she won the like the world championship with the world blitz championship three times, and I think she was even close to to another title. So yeah, she's an amazing player. It's crazy that she also she's also able to to keep. Okay, now it's just over with two pawns. It's impossible. Wow, no, incredible. I mean, this game actually was really so important because now Nana Zagnitsa had a, such a winning position and now losing that winning game uh, leads to a score of four one four to one and this is is three points behind so it's hard to it's hard to come back nana needs to start winning so another choice of opening for nana because she went for d6 like she wanted to play the knight and Ekaterina Lagno has chosen a positional approach bishop b5 the Rosalima Sicilian which goes once again for uh, for the positions uh, with a lot of maneuvering and white wants to have a center so c4 should be met by a4 and b3 then you know you need to break this pawn chain chain Mm -hmm. But pay attention that now the e4 pawn is hanging and you don't have this d3 move, which you have in other variations to protect it. Because d3 will be met by cd3 and I will take on e4. But exactly how it went? Maybe because uh, b5 was hanging as well. No, no, yes, of course, you need to take on e4, but now... 
Hmm. Now queen take is protecting the pawn on e4. So queen c7, but this this line is actually considered to be very dangerous for black. Another... How is white going to approach here? Um, is it dangerous because the a6 pawn might be always a target or maybe the knight can go to c4? But on the other hand, for the moment, you, you see this queen a4, bishop d3 is, uh, is looking quite active. But when I will be able to castle, then the, the threat of knight c5 will become uh, very dangerous. So you will have to replace your pieces to find more harmonious squares for the pieces. Yeah, if, uh, and I if like b4 it. is played in order to avoid, then the c3 pawn might be weak. Okay. And b4 is in a way like here would be a move like in nowhere because you don't, you really weaken your c3 pawn and uh, you don't, um, you don't achieve anything. Mm -hmm. So I really like e5, bishop, like then uh, bishop b7. So I will castle, oh, but still, you see, you were right. <laughs> Like before, you know, this probably was very important to keep the um, the knight from the c5 square. Yeah, and c4. Okay, so the pawn are uh, controlling lots of square on the fifth rank. So all the square in front of the pawn are control. And um, but now we will see: are, uh, will white be able to support those pawns, or will will they be a target for? And please have a look, a5, a very interesting positional sacrifice. She Nana fights for the c5 square. She gives the bound, but she still wants to play knight c5. Then she will take the bishop and the c4 pawn will become weak. Uh, I like this move very much. So what to do here with white? Yeah. She took the pawn, so she's accepting the sacrifice. Now we are going to see exactly... Uh, what Almira said, knight c5, uh, black is going to take this bishop, and then the c4 pawn is going to be very weak. Uh -huh. I think it's yes. going to take immediately, I think. Black has no pressure to take. Oh, well, e4. Yes, she could take on e4. That's what I wanted to say, that you couldn't protect both pawns um, in, a nice, in a nice way. So now Nana... I think that when Nana ha has a possibility to play f5, she will play it, you know? So you can see that even here, she will have the possibility to push f5. Mm. So let's see if she will do this. Yeah. So now when Which we were color would you pick here? Oh, black, of course. Like, <laughs> even though I play this position with white, I play this opening, I know this opening very well, but I will never go for this line. I go for another line, which is rather quiet. I, well, I, bishop a4 is also a very recent move in development in the theory. So I would go to bishop f1, c4, d4 line. I want to build the center. Mm -hmm. This line actually gives you the opportunity to build the center. And uh, Nana is still thinking. Okay, critical moment. You know, the, in the previous games, we've seen mm. that Nana like um, was, was taking lots of time. Yes, was taking a lot of times, and then uh, her decisions were not optimal. So here, Knight C3 is is a very nice move. I exchange this pair of knights, and um, on the same way, I protect the A5 pawn. You know, Nana wanted to get it back. Now, now white is placing the rook on the b file. Mostly in the, in, in the end game, in order to uh, to keep pushing, you need to create a pass pawn. What do you think should be here? Uh, it seems very hard for black to create a pass pawn. What do you think should be here, the strategy, the approach for black? You know, the strategy is here somehow, even if black is the pawn down, I feel that this knight is so much better than the bishop on f1. You yeah. know, uh, so even if you're a pound down, this uh, difference in the activity of your pieces uh, could be crucial. One, one idea that I have to improve this bishop is to play g3 and bishop g2, even to give the a5 pound, but uh, then, uh, so bishop g2 and bishop d5, that would be for me an optimal improvement. Mm -hmm. 
because so, I, clearly the bishop on d5 would be completely another bishop like a newborn bishop um supported by the pawn on c4 targeting f7 b7 so it would be a dream yes you're absolutely right and that's what i have this feeling you know uh from so many games how actually players they take their decisions because they've already seen so many patterns so many games so i have this feeling the intuition which says to me that in the long run you know uh white uh, is um well white will probably fight for a draw mm -hmm. even though it's curious, then i think the first for the first time in the match uh katerina lagno has less time than nana and actually since like oh, okay yes now i have because sometimes i simply do not see the time <laughs> <laughs> it's like i'm half blind during the stream so like now i can see yes yeah now nana that... has two minutes and 10 seconds katarina like no one minute 40 seconds and okay nana is upon up now and she has a better night um hmm. yeah now it's incredible how the um... you see she goes for g3 but here i, I feel that she uh, she lost some some precious tempi yeah also the fact that the pawn on e, the the two rook on the a file when they were uh looking at the pawn on a5 they were a bit passive they were not really active now that the pawn is uh gone uh -huh. They they can join the game and then they can start to, uh, yeah, to do other threat. Still now black has to keep control of the pawn on d6. Um, uh, but let's see how black will. Do you think it, to bring the king to e7 can be an option or is too weak the king there? Uh, unfortunately, if you wouldn't have the rooks, then it could be an option. But then even like king f8, uh, king g7 could be easily met by queen d2 with this queen g5 check, and you cannot play f6. You know, mm -hmm. then uh, if you wouldn't have the rooks on the board, that's what I actually was asking myself. Should you keep the rooks? Should you exchange two rooks? And um, that's why I wanted to exchange everything on day five and to transfer the bishop immediately. It would be probably easier to defend. But I might be mistaken as well because um, those decisions are very difficult to make, very tough to make. You need and to what is the difference without a rook? Can you play then? Can you place then the king on e7? Yes, you can play the king on the seven, but on the other hand, like my bishop would be placed on d5. It could all be um, exchanged and actually it could be all be um, like the position which I can see uh, is a queen's endgame with the pawn up, which probably is a draw. Mm -hmm. So if all the pieces are exchanged, it will be much easier to defend this um, queen's endgame. Uh, so also, when you exchange the, the rooks, you don't have this idea of losing your, your queen. You know, if you play king e7, at some point they will play rook a7 and uh, yeah. all this idea, attacking ideas. All right, I like how black activated these pieces. Now both rook and queen are pointing at f2. Yeah. And so, okay, queen f3 was needed. But what after... Is 94 a possibility? Yes, it is a very nice move, 94. Because you cannot take it, because I will simply take on f2. I really like this move, 94. You are absolutely right. This is uh, probably finishes the game immediately. Mm. So Nana will be able to win, finally, the, her first game. Because here, <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, unless another miracle, I, I do not see a defense. So, yeah, queen, this looks queen. really as two rooks like falling. So, let's see if Katarina is finding another incredible resource here. You see, that's the answer to your question why you need to exchange both rooks because this wouldn't be possible simply. You cannot attack the f2 pawn three times. That's you true. see how, yes, how we come to these conclusions by later on the game in the game. <laughs> The game is answering the question. Now G3 is also uh, another weak pawn. Mm -hmm. Well, this position is really hopeless. Yes, knight G4. 
I can simply push f5, e4. Okay, now c5 could be an idea to push the pawn on c5. Yes, but now king is seven. Yeah, beautiful. And king is six, of course. That was a very nice uh, king's march. So king f6, king is seven, king is six. But kudos to both players, you know, they like. Katerina even here manages to find some ideas. You know, c5, I can still uh, go for c6, but here after king e7, it is no longer possible. Yeah. Now the pawn got exchanged, and uh, your black is, oh no, black is oh. up to pawns, but now lost the pawn. Oh my God, this is not possible. What is happening to Nana? Now she's losing another pawn, the pawn on g6. Oh, no, 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 no. It seems that when she's down to a few seconds, she loses control. And Katerina is, uh, her her nerves is like made of steel. I don't know how she does it. So that's yeah. a ball once again. I cannot believe she saved this. Really, this, <laughs> this, this is absolutely incredible. You know, every time you say this now is absolutely hopeless, I don't think in another miracle. And again, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you, as you can see, like I told you, whenever you want to be an oracle, like, uh, like I'm always wrong. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, up to now, your prediction to Katerina was, was right. So at least yeah. something, at least i got something right yes uh, <laughs> okay next time you say this is now completely winning i say chess is always in chess there is always a chance there is always a possibility chess is a game where it's never over until it's really over so and in your experience since you've watched a lot of these matches and you played them like them yourself we we go exactly for the same position as in the previous game. Will she go for 95, 96? Okay. Katerina was actually very confident, I think, with her opening pre preparation. That's why she goes. But so in your experience, how many games they will play overall? Uh, I mean, in this portion, five plus one. Okay, I think this will be the last game. There are four minutes to go. Um, and so this will be the last game. Ah, okay, now I see because like these numbers are so small, so I have to <laughs> I have to bring some alert. You know, yes, this is going to be their last game. Yeah, probably unless there is an extremely quick um, quick checkmate, but I don't think mm -hmm. it will be the case. Uh, I expect a fighting game, so the time will be will run to zero, and so then the players just need to finish their game. And I think the number game is always around uh, eight, nine per section because the time is reducing, but also uh, the countdown will be less. So it's always around eight, seven, seven to nine games always. Okay. And they repeat exactly this. They, they're like, that's the same move order as from the previous game. So maybe here, uh, Katerina will improve. So after bishop f3, I think she knew, that was the critical moment I was talking about the game. And uh, as I remember, she took on e5 here. So maybe she has to find another choice, like after bishop b5, you see, knight e5. And she didn't go for this in the previous game. Yeah, yeah. The pawn on e5 is gone. So um, here after, it's clear that Katerina could not uh, could not go for a preparation. Uh, so she thought in her mind this improvement, and this is how Grandmaster, um, why Grandmaster are so strong, because even without analyzing with an engine, they realize where they did something wrong and they are able to improve their, themselves. It's very open, it's actually very important to open these files and look, Alicia, there is this threat, Knight D3 now. You have to do something about this. Knight d3, Beautiful. you take, and then bishop c3 with check, bishop b2. So actually, that's why Katerina went for, for this line. She's a pound down, but her pieces are so active. And you have maybe this knight c2, bishop d4, knight d3, a lot of checks. So that's why it was very important to open all the lines for the rooks and the diagonals for the bishops. Yeah, yeah. So that's why Nana is actually thinking because there are a lot of tactical threats in this position. Yeah, definitely. And what do you think would be a move? King f2 could be a move? And then after bishop d4 even going to g2? 
but maybe after king f2 i will play bishop h3 here where do you go then yeah good question and you cannot play knight d5 because your bishop on b2 is hanging as well so you have to be very careful yeah and if the king is going to f1 in order to reply to bishop h3 with uh, bishop g2 um and then i was thinking is there a threat after king f1 knight takes a2 you know i take i simply go for this side knight takes a2 knight takes a2 maybe we can show it quickly none is still yeah. like king f1 maybe i can play knight a2 here no i don't play bishop h3 this you know and then i'll take on a b2 take on b3 you know this is very dangerous yeah yeah incredible that in one single position there are so many threats because let's say in this position um let's say that black can move so one idea can be knight take a2 then one idea can be knight to d3 and it's not so easy to deal with all them it's actually impossible okay we have a move and the move played was g4 wow uh yes because uh, this is a really critical moment she first of all she's dealing with this bishop h3 threat she um let's see what happens on knight g3 our first suggestion maybe it loses on the spot knight g3 or she wants uh, i cannot knight g3 let's see yeah knight d3 the difference is that the bishop on f5 will be hanging yes but you're Mm, still you take i will take on c3 with check then king d1 king. i will take on b2 your rook is hanging then i <coughs> i can take on g3 mm, it seems winning as well maybe you are losing you are not losing on the spot but probably this is the continuation you should go for you yeah maybe she will play with her with an exchange down but uh in ex should be an exchange for for one pawn I will not take the exchange. Maybe I will go for the most positional. How do you, like let's put knight d3 on the board yeah. so we can see it how difficult it is. So what do you do here? Mm. It's uh, because your bishop is hanging. You are forced to take. Yeah. So I bishop take. On b2, yes, and bishop c3 check. So what do you do here? Mm -hmm. Maybe I can do king f2. Mm -hmm. But then bishop b2 wins probably immediately so that because i have bishop d4 this without exchange it's probably... yeah i want to take the, the oh, bishop mm -hmm. on f5 then but i no longer give the the um the evaluation of the position as hopeless <laughs> let's say slightly better for black <laughs> this time it's katarina you know okay we have we have moves on the board and it's yes. exactly what we were telling exactly she took the bishop on f5 and now is now that he is fighting with an exchange down mm -hmm. yeah exactly what we were looking at so it means that we are doing a good job yes you know <laughs> <laughs> kudos to us but uh, once again nana has found actually a very nice idea in order to hold this position yes this bishop on e4 protects two pounds but rook e5 was a very good move now i want to take on f5 and on g3 mm -hmm. there is absolutely nothing you can do maybe king f3 take on f5 king f4 something like this yes i don't know practical chance yes and then king f4 just bring the king yeah just some practical chance you never know then take on the five yeah, so let's rook g3 ah she wants to play rook g5 maybe if i take on the five but it seems to be and also protect the d3 pound so she wouldn't lose immediately both of the pounds yeah but still i like like more your your idea king f3 king f4 uh, because he is not losing um is activating the king using also uh -huh. the king um, it's putting pressure on black it's also sometimes uh, unusual you know somehow mm -hmm. black feels that they're winning on the spot but then you have this king's march then like one mistake another mistake as we have seen in the previous game so like anything can happen so king yeah. is seven she brings her king closer is the king to going the to battle. three 
Actually, I like this king e3. Probably black wants to play c5 here. And then I was thinking about the move b4. Beautiful. Yes. b4 here, so you can no longer take. You try to create maybe some pass pawn, then by b5, a4, a5, b6. I don't know. Anything can happen, yeah. as you said. Let's see. I, I'm pretty confident that b4 is going to happen now. Also, because I don't really see other idea for white. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think king f4 is really, maybe king f4 can also be an idea. But b4 maybe could be met, we have to calculate b4, g takes f5, probably you have to take on f5, and then rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes, you still cannot take on b4, but and rook h4. Black is still winning by big margin, but... Um... Okay, but after b4, uh -huh. Ah, pawn take on f5. Yes, that's what I wanted to calculate. These, you know, these lines are very forced. So b4 is a very forced move. So g takes f5 is a very forced move. This is how you should play. Yeah. So you are forced to take with the rook because b takes c5. Ah, no, wait. B takes c5. Can you play b takes c5? And take then there is f take e4, yes. I think. Ah, look at this variation. And then the pawn is going to yes. promote. This, this is crazy, this no? nice variation. Yes, this and f boom. Uh -huh. This is a very nice variation. So that's why she cannot do this. Uh -huh. So you need to. Okay, and let's see because they are playing, they are uh -huh. going on. Okay, f6 is the move played here. Okay, and maybe after king d7, oh, h4. Mm -hmm. A5, rook F4. She didn't back. even she didn't want to play before there. Okay, but here I feel yes, she, she lost another pawn. Mm. Yeah, now it's after F5 is really over, I think. Well, it's never over until it's over, <laughs> but now is uh, Katarina Lagno with the winning position, and she also had uh, an amazing time advantage. She has one minute on the clock that allows her to take. Always few seconds to think about a good move. And here I think too many pawns are falling. Uh, now B3 is falling. So this should be just over. And we have a resignation. Yes. And for the first time, I had a look at Katerina's face during the match. You know, she's staying focused to the red. She has this um, um, like optimal concentration. She, I, unbelievable really yeah. she's completely winning but still she is waiting you know for for the end yeah she's she's really uh incredible a cold blood player all right so this first uh the fourth part is over uh we are gonna come back soon with the three plus one we are gonna see if the players are going to change their attitude their attitude three plus one is coming back in a few minutes
Oh la la, we are back. And here you see, guys, the pairing uh, of this uh, quarterfinals. Today we have just the first one of the quarterfinals, Katarina Lagno against Nana Zakirnitsa. But as you see, in the next days, tomorrow we have two quarterfinal Uifan against Bibi Sara, Arika against Anna Muzicic. So keep, stay tuned. And also, of course, on Monday we have the last quarterfinal between Leigh Tingy and um, Antonetta Stefanova. I also I already say sorry for mispronouncing some names, um, but it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> how about my name, Alessia? <laughs> Almira Stripchenko, I would say. Yes, you see how easy. Easy. Chesno. And mine? <laughs> and mine, Almira? How do you pronounce? It's easy, Alessia Santeramo. Ah, you see, the accent is wrong. No? <laughs> it's Santeramo. <laughs> ah, Santeramo, okay. <laughs> but it's a common, I mean, also in Italians are pronouncing it with accent on on another, so don't worry. But it's the same for Skripchenka, you know, it's somehow it's Skripchenka. Oh. So <laughs> oh, you see? It's also yes. there. <laughs> All right, the game has started so here we have three plus one so the time is shorter and we see um the again the same uh the, the same, same opening, opening. Mm -hmm. yeah uh so she will go for bishop b6 once again and bishop G f6 is actually is one of the um most principled continuations here um Yes, but in this line, we got. I gotta say, Nana seems really to be always confident. But here, something changed. The knight goes to yes. b six. Yes, that's why. Uh, so she took on f six, then knight d five, and knight b six. It's another positional idea here to castle actually quickly. And you see, Katerina prepared this line, I think, during the break, something a little bit. I, I think that she had a look at the games and she wants probably, well, first king b1 and then to launch attack. Yes, h4, h5. Yeah. Let's put this on the board that this will happen. Yeah, yeah. And I think that the, the bishop on, we, we always had a bishop on h6 in the previous game, that it was so annoying because white was never able to castle. And so Katerina took measure and she's now already castled. The king is safe on b1 and mm -hmm. she will go for this h4, h5. How to deal now with f5? Well, actually now f5 could be met with... Um f3 that's exactly what i was trying to calculate but um i was also looking for the ways for black to activate this bishop on g7 it's very important to find some idea uh, on the other hand i could also play knight e7 and sacrifice the pawn but this sh should well after f5 it's uh, less effective Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to sacrifice it before with the, the pawn and f7 and could give black actually very nice counterplay. But let's see, f5, should we take... Uh, okay, so the, the difference of the, with this variation is this knight on b6 is actually for the moment blocking everything. Mm -hmm. So black f5. cannot push pawn, cannot play b5, maybe in some cases knight a4, knight c4. Also, not so easy for black to connect the rooks. You know, you're lacking squares. So f takes e4, f takes e4 is a normal continuation. And then queen h4, the pawn on e4 is hanging. So queen d3. And uh, actually. But it's also true that this knight on b6 is very far away from the king's side. So mm -hmm. it's not. Uh, why doesn't have many pieces to attack the king right now? Yes, but maybe now white has to switch to a more positional plan since black mm -hmm. played the f5, f takes c4. Now my idea is to exchange once again this light square bishops. You know, if I will be able to play something like um, knight e3 here, is it possible? G3, okay, g3 right? in order to protect the, key, the pawn on g2. And maybe knight e3 here. Because I really like somehow... Um, yeah, also one. after 93, it's true that right now uh, the pawn on h2 is hanging. Um, but let's say also the pawn on d6 is a big problem for 
Yeah, well, uh, Katerina has just chosen knight c7 with the same idea. She wants to force actually this exchange because now the bishop is hanging. So knight attacks the bishop on e6. And, but you see, and very rightfully, Nana doesn't want. She plays bishop g4. She needs to keep this bishop on the board. And um, what to do here? Can we take on d2? Or maybe rook f8? Rook, rook f8 as well. Yeah, both possibilities are very interesting. Yes. And uh, because I wanted to take on d2, play bishop f3 and bishop e4, but maybe then uh, rook e1, probably. Yes. So still defends. Yeah. So there is no the yes, no direct way to win the pawn. Let's see what Nana played. Maybe rook f8 is a very nice move. And then and that was played. Mm -hmm. Queen d6, a very concrete line. And it's incredible that here the time travel oh, just counts a little bit earlier. And Nana is already with 17 seconds and she has to fight in this position. That but is if I still... play rook f1 here with the threat rook f8. You know, okay, I don't want to change rook f1 with the threat rook f8. What to do? She didn't do. Okay, rook h2. <laughs> white is playing slowly here. I think white has the more active pieces, the more active position. Um... Uh, well, in this position, I think the most important factor is the safety of the king. And please have a look at this black king, you know, has yeah. no squares. So I think- I really like 96. Yes. That is tar targeting the bishop on t7. It is a piece that is still protecting the king. Oh, the oh, no. oh, my god. oh my god. Oh my god, what happened? She blundered the queen? Wow. This is... In Italian, we call it baulata right now. <laughs> oh the God. technical terms to describe the queen's gun. Oh, you even have a technical term, you know, for describing this kind of situation. This is a really. Yes, yeah, it's a very technical term. Incredible. Well, I was familiar with some like football terms, you know, like catenaccio, you know, and things like exactly. this. Exactly. But... <laughs> Do you know what the botted's gambit is? I know. Uh, that's exactly what we saw. You give away your queen. And nice gift for your opponent. It's the okay. other technical term, the international technical term. Okay, yes. this game just finished. Mm -hmm. But this was uh, such a dramatic blunder. You know, I st my my like I st I'm shivering myself, and I'm not even playing this game. So, uh, oh my god! You know, here like Katerina has to calm down. I think this after such a game, uh, you really need to calm down and uh, just. Say so, okay, that was one game, one blunder. Nothing really happened. We started a new tournament once again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now Nana actually goes for the Greenfield types of the position, but she, well, with Bishop on G two. Yeah, then... is uh, Nana is a bit avoiding the main lines probably because uh, she knows that Katerina Lagno is really an expert in this line with Black, so she prefers to go for sidelines and to try to play a bit of counter position. Yes, that's what I wanted to tell, that knight c6 was um, uh, like a theoretical line, which uh, leads to, to a more or less equal position. So I'm really curious to see what Nana has in mind here. Yeah, let's remind everyone that Nana needs absolutely to start to score because she's three points behind. Look, the current score is five and a half to two and a half. So she needs to uh, to come back to start to score. There are still thirty seven minutes in this three plus one section. Mm -hmm. Bishop a three. It's a nice move. Let's just show. So white threatened probably to take on d eight, take on e seven, then on c six, and uh, Nana doesn't want to take uh, on c six immediately. So. Uh, Katerina took on c3, rook c1. Actually, Nana plays for the initiative in this game. Yeah, I like I like this approach. Okay, bishop f7 is strong uh, move because he's protecting the pawn on e7. So the idea of taking on c6 and maybe on d8 and then on e7 uh, is not working because the pawn is protected. Will Nana take back the pawn uh, on c6? 
yes, with the bishop. Mm -hmm. But once again, from what I know, like I, I do not play this position with both colors, but from the games I've seen, you know, well, it leads to a very um, balanced play. So bishop h3 is the typical reaction actually for a black when you take um, on c6. So then if you take on a8, then I simply take queen a8. So I threaten the mate on g2 and your rook is also hanging. Let's show this. Yeah, beautiful, yes. beautiful. So and threatening then... mate and the rook is hanging. Yeah, it's a very nice way to resolve all the problem, I feel, because now uh, white will not take. Oh, actually, yeah. it happened. It went exactly in this way. So they went. Uh, another idea that I wanted to show is that in this line, that if you take on d8, then I simply take with other rook, and my rook is not hanging anymore. So that's how here. Yes, rook a d8. You see? Yeah. So it's a way a bit to simplify the position and to solve problem because in uh -huh. this kind of position, black was still a bit behind. Uh, still, the bishop was at home. The rook is under attack. So this, I really like this move. It's very. Uh -huh. Uh, very powerful. Yes, but I think our like viewers should remember this idea. It's very thematical and it solves a lot of your problems immediately. So you simply are not afraid. You don't react. You attack the, the other rook. Beautiful move. Beautiful idea. So, well, as you can see, the position is equal, as I predicted. I hope that I'm not wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always like to uh, take a look at position plus time situation. And yes. here the time looks also very balanced. So both players were more than one minute. And this position is easier to play uh, than, than other messy position that we had before. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, is there some weak point? OK, the pawn on e7 is a bit weak. Uh -huh. But I don't think should be should be a problem. Maybe White can att is attack is, is the one that is having a bit more initiative because he's attacking the pawn on e7. Uh, the pieces are more active, but this is very something very little. But on the other hand, I always have this feeling that when White played f3, it is always possible to sacrifice a few pounds, but then activate your bishop and then somehow invade the first rank, you know. So this f3 pawn is actually like a small, um, uh, how do you say this? Um, no, I forgot the English word, so I will have to. You can say it, it in French. <laughs> well, I actually have it in Russian somehow, you know, I'm <laughs> entering this schizophrenic state, you know, where I no longer know like who I am anymore. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway, you see this diagonal like g1, a a7 and especially with the dark square bishops is weakened so if you will activate your bishop somehow in your queen this could be really very dangerous potentially like for yeah. for white hmm. so um nana is actually trying to um to put her pieces like in a more active position and to to wait for katerina's move you know you you cannot move rook d8 i will take on e7 rook c8 you don't have rook b8 i will also probably take on e7 so um she's trying to improve her position and uh, wait so h4 i like this mm, but g4 h3 this is a double hedge point oh, because that one could be suddenly hanging but also it's giving you now that f4 is played it's giving you a beautiful is supporting uh, maybe a piece like a queen on g2 so oh, oh oh attention here i feel that nana is playing with fire although she needs to win as you have said but uh, um this is very dangerous what she's doing but she needs to win but more than that she needs not to lose because if not the the margin is uh, i mean even if she makes a draw here still three points are possible to to recover but if not gets really gets really hard okay now she took uh black took on h2 white took on e6 g6 is a problem this mm -hmm. looks really really very hard the king is just going to ooh like but no but you still have you know probably uh, no it what? was at least a draw no 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 no, no, no. why she resigned but there was like the time time out ah she the was... time she lost some time yeah. 
Oh my yeah, God. she could just take on G6, yes, give a bit of checks. Mm -hmm. uh, time, Incredible. time. Okay, yes, the time is the key factor here. Um, so this is one of the openings that I also uh, know a little bit. White plays bishop b5 check first to um, provoke bishop d7 because bishop d7 is not the optimal square and then bishop c4. And with the idea of castling and playing f5 very quickly. Knight c6 wanted to play knight a5 and to take the bishops. That's why a4. Mm -hmm. And now knight f6 probably should be played with black. And um, yes, this is uh, the normal continuation. Uh, but then also castle d3. And this, what do you call this? The Grand Prix attack, I think. Hmm. It's it's a very interesting opening because uh, well once again yeah. Nana, yes Nana is thinking because she you know naturally you you're afraid to put your knight on f six you think what about e five what is happening there yeah I will I can attack your knight immediately knight f six e five but uh, then I will yeah what idea could also be maybe e six and knight to exactly to e seven. But e6, I'm calculating uh, what? g3, knight e7, castle. And then I will play f5. I will sacrifice this. That's the, uh, the idea behind this opening. Yeah, yeah. If you castle, castle, I will play f5. Yeah, and this is exactly how the game is going. Um, so now we expect castle from both yes. sides. The king are ready to go into a safe place. Uh -huh. Let's see. So castle, if Nana castled, I think the theoretical move here is to play f5. You sacrifice the pawn. Uh, she chooses another plan, queen e1, then... Um, Maybe to prepare here. your idea of f5. No, um, queen e1 is actually another idea. You want to bring your queen to h4 and to play knight g5. That's why knight d4 was essential to exchange this these knights. Mm -hmm. um, but once again, I think that black played very well. Nana played very well. G5 is a very nice move. You no longer have an attack with white. And your knight on e2 is not optimal. You need to play king h1, knight g1, knight f3. Yeah. Now, Nana is always playing very, very good games, very good moves. Um, and then the time trouble is a problem. I I don't know if she has pre move in pre moves enabled. I'm not sure, but it's also uh, as I told you at the beginning of the match, like there are two players with two different styles, and I have this feeling when you are such a creative player as Nana, you know, because Katerina has more practical approach, you will always lose like a few important seconds now and like here and there, and that's what makes the difference. Yeah. So uh, oh, f6. Uh -huh. Okay, now white is blocking that bishop um, out of the game. I don't know if the bishop will go on h6 or on h8. If I, if the bishop is going to h, oh, knight to g4 attacking the queen. Is the pawn on f6 yes, falling? Queen Not H4 because the it's a very queen. nice move. So now rook f6 and queen d bah, but you have on queen d8 bishop g5 what what's happening there no she couldn't take it back maybe she missed this idea yeah but now white is having just two pieces for a rook which is a good advantage especially now that the dark scholar that dark square uh, bishop is missing which mm -hmm. is an important bishop because all the squares are weak imagine a knight on h3 would be made already <laughs> On h6, yes, it's uh, oh, yeah, yeah, six. It, would be, it would be very nice. Uh, like, uh, what do you call this um, chess in English um, when you play with two boards? Uh, bong, uh, no, uh, the back house, yes. So you, yeah. you can drop your knight on h6, you know, and as in shogi, Japanese chess as well. I think that the back house was created from the model of. Uh, the Japanese shogi, and then actually when you take the piece of your opponent, it becomes yours. So you can parachute it. So it will be a very nice parachute, yes, with the knight on h6. Um, okay, now sadly the rook moved from f8, so will not be a mate anymore. 
uh, but then you just need to put a pawn on g7 in this beautiful mate. <laughs> B3, yes, I had to be played because uh, bishop c4, d c4, maybe e4, then, mm, but. Okay, now e5 e is hanging. Yes, e5 is hanging and there is no easy way to protect it. Well, what can I say? Ah, there was bishop b5, rook e8, so she couldn't. But play. if bishop e5 now? Wait, because then there ah if knight f six, I was thinking king bishop f five, and then but then there is king g seven. King f six, yes, exactly. So again, your Katarina Lagno is putting pressure, and she has two pieces for a rook. And what is the pawn situation? Uh, five against uh, five against six. Okay. Well, actually, here it doesn't matter. That's what I wanted to say, that uh, white needs to play g5 to fix this pawn structure, and then white is completely winning. Once again. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it feels like it feels like white is actually a pawn up, because the pawn on c5 is passed. Instead, black is not having any pass pawn that can be used. And the biggest problem here, what I feel is that it's very difficult for black to create any sort of counterplay. You know, how do you activate your rook? You need to play b4, b3. So you see, that's why uh, Nana resigned. And another timeout. A timeout even, okay. Yeah. And this time this? control is really, yes. is really hard. But we have an important change of situation. Now we have e4, e5, a classical, the Gioco Piano, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we go for... Whoa, whoa, whoa. We go the most important here. situation is that Nana played e4. It's because uh, Katerina Lagno uh, has e5 in her main repertoire. So mm -hmm. what changed is that Nana stopped playing this positional openings. She goes for the kill immediately. This is to the theoretical line. Uh, we will see um, if Nana has some no opening novelty here. And uh, she, well, Katerina is thinking, she's trying to remember because she has to castle and then a black plays a five. Mm. We'll yeah. But this is a very impressive score for Katerina Lagno. You know, when I said that she was a slight favorite, I didn't expect like seven and a half and two and a half. I yeah, know. I mean, all the games, I feel like Nana really threw out of the window lots of points here. And because the score, the score could have been for a very small, with very small improvement mm -hmm. by Nana's playing, um, much different. So in, in this time format, we don't have breaks. So you just have to keep on playing. You, you, you don't have this two minutes for a break just to keep your com composure, regain your composure after yeah. a lot. And uh, it's very strange, but um, Katerina like, is thinking for a very long, was thinking for a very long time for a blitz game. So she goes for bishop f5 actually here. Yeah. Bishop f5. Uh, now we might, white needs to take care of some discovery, potential discovery check with the knight going away. Uh, maybe knight g3 could be a threat right yes. now. Mm -hmm. Knight g3 is actually a very interesting threat. So the rook on h1 is hanging. So maybe bishop d3 we are going to see. But then knight b4. You see bishop oh, yeah. d3 knight before and uh, you're in real trouble. Okay, queen a4 looks better this. <laughs> yes, let's show us the simple bishop d3 runs into knight before and I think that uh, black is almost winning. Yeah. So you see, should be you should be careful. Yeah. Uh, so queen a4, that's why actually queen a4. Knight e7. Um, well, I feel that the typical reaction would be to play f6 here, c6 and f6. Uh, but maybe Katerina has something else in mind. f6, exactly on the board. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the this is actually, yes, it's not something that I really prepared. Uh, it, I know the ideas in this opening. So f6 is a typical reaction once again. 
Yeah, because yeah. why does this strong center uh, D4, C4, and as also, it's also typical in some close French line uh -huh. uh, that there are two ways to uh, to attack this, either with C5 or with F6. And here F6 is uh, what Katerina Lagno played. Be careful now. Knight E4 is threatening, and because the the pawn is pinned, yes, Katerina was forced yes. to play Bishop E5. Yes. Mm -hmm. F4, she solidifies the center. Uh, but this is sort of an optical illusion. White now has like this past pawn on e5, but um, once again, the game is probably balanced. You should uh, keep your eye on the e5 pawn because if your queen goes away, then I can take it. Mm -hmm. Let's say if here, for example, you play queen d1, just quickly we'll show it on the board. I can take knight e5. Mm -hmm. You want queen d1 here? Yeah, just we show the idea. Yes. Yes, because here e4, and so we see how I'm like, I can take on e5, knight e5. And the bishop and is standing, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's why you cannot, no, you cannot do this. And uh, Nana played a4. And we okay. have also rook, t, rook e8, a5, and bishop to, to d8. Well, what does Nana want with this uh, a5? Does she want to provoke a6, b6, and then rook c1? Mm -hmm. Or it... But somehow it feels a bit inconsistent. She plays a4, a5, and then rook f2. You don't really want to double on the file here, because I will simply play bishop h3. So what what is the idea behind this? Uh... Yeah, it doesn't seem easy to find a way to go on for white. Um, I don't know if maybe queen c3 and then b4, trying to go for b5 could be an idea. You see what happened, rook f1, bishop h3, what I predicted, and then simply, uh, well, both rooks are traded, and very important maneuver that you, your knight will go to e6, and potentially your d4 pawn will become a weakness and uh, you will not be able to exploit you know the the strengths of your past pawn that's exactly what's happening in the game so you like what you have to watch out knight to three protects on d4 and bishop d8 yeah and the time is getting very little again uh, nana has only 17 seconds mm -hmm. this is yeah. amazing mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be even crazier in the one plus one section uh, because we get to, okay, every moves will be done much faster, um, but let's see. I have to admit that I think that I've never played bullet in my life, you know, so it will oh, be no. really very interesting for me to watch because I have this classical education, so I feel that, uh, you know, I need some time to think. So. Amira. <laughs> Yes, I want to see you playing bullet. <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> we um, want to see. You know, every time you want to play bullet, you're always invited to my channel. We can we can have a lot of fun with bullet. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I will I will have to prepare something, you know, otherwise. But let's <laughs> have a look at this game. You know, Nana very uh, rightfully exchanged this knight, the six and d4. Uh, but you see my king goes to e6 and I was not sure about this exchange on on d6 but she managed to bring the king closer to take on g7 and um, well black still can take on a5 I don't know Katerina wanted to keep the bishop there and to take on b2 yeah, now the pawn on the file is running and uh, white has to sacrifice a bishop right now, but it feels that black is collecting just so many pawns and even the pawn G and H are very well stopped by the bishop. Instead, the A pawn is just, oh, so strong. Yes, black is much faster. Wow. Wow. No, it's it's impressive. It's impressive how Katarina Lagno is collecting one point after each other. The current score is uh, seven, uh, eight, and, eight and a half to two and a half. So incredible. Yes, and let's remind our viewers that we have the 
three times world blitz champion playing against the uh, world blitz champion you know so katerina lagna is playing against nana jagniza those players are simply uh the best in the world in this format so to have this margin like a six points margin so far is uh, very impressive yeah absolutely okay the french defense yes this is uh, this variation is um also very interesting because uh white temporarily sacrificed this pawn on d4 uh knight f3 should be played yes and then I don't even take it somehow. Sometimes I'll play bishop d3, uh, castle, and create an attack. I will probably go for the bishop on c7. Depends yeah. what, that's exactly what happens. So it depends on Katerina's uh, preparation. Mm. You, you can play, take on c7, play b4, because taking on d4 is not really optimal in this position. Yeah. Look what why like, look like a very easy position for white the bishops are ready and and there is no no hurry to take the pawn back on d4 well i think castle or knight c7 so castle first but katerina, katerina is waiting for a6 and then she will take on c7 that's why and nana doesn't want to play a6 she wants to she... see the temper, yes, exactly. You see Indeed. what happened. <laughs> so a6, knight c7, queen c7, queen e1, once again. And I when wait... do you expect black to castle? Well, it's very difficult here for black to castle long because then I will play b4, a4 immediately. Actually comes even uh, faster than if you will castle short. Hmm. So this knight is five. hard to since dangerous to cast both sides actually the center looks looks even safer <laughs> but knight f5 is a very very nice positional idea so let's see what will happen bishop f5 if uh, like we'll show my idea is based on this if i will take bishop f5 then i will take e5 e takes f5 yeah let's just show it because now we have the possibility we could um, show queen f2 okay let's go back to... yes the black's idea is exactly if you take on the five it seems like your structure is getting worse but it takes in five and then i will put my bishop on e6 and this is like a very typical idea in french you keep both pawns and you're fine yeah that's why uh, katerina played queen f2 so queen b6 protecting once again over protecting the d4 pawn because i feel that katerina had in mind g4 and knight d4 yeah g4 and knight d4 that's why queen b6 and also knight e3 with the idea of knight e3 so rook e1 protects from this idea yeah knight e3 was very very powerful mm -hmm. h6 very interesting so Nana probably wants, well, you see, Nana waits with the castle as well. You were right, you know, Alicia. It's uh, very important to know where to castle, but you need to wait. Yeah, absolutely. So if it's... I play g4, maybe knight e3, and then castle long. I don't know, c3. Oh, very nice move. And it's important to wait to castle because once black is taking the decision, cannot go back. And is giving for white a clear idea, clear plan where to start to push the pawns. Yes, you're absolutely right. So now c3 we couldn't take because the queen was hanging. Yes, on b6, very important moment. <laughs> yeah, of course. We are not going to see again. How is the the queen blunder? And I also wanted to show Elisa that on queen b2. Black was losing the queen after rook b1, also very important. Yes. We... Oh, after? Queen b2, instead of here. Like oh, yeah. Rook c8, instead queen of b2. rook c8. Yes. Queen b2, rook b1, you were losing the other rook. Yeah, the other rook. Yes. You were losing the queen simply. So both moves were not possible. That's why rook c8. But see, now you can only castle shorts. That's why Katerina plays g4 here immediately and takes on d4. Yes, yeah, before rook c8 is a move like saying, okay, I rather castle short or I stay with my king in the center. So g4 and try to play f5 looks very logical for white. 
Okay, Bishop B5, a very important strategical idea for black here. You need to exchange this light square bishops in order to uh, make the attack less strong. And actually, I don't like this Bishop B5. I wanted to keep this bishop. Mm. So maybe bishop back on b1, something similar? No, c2. I wanted to play bishop c2, but I don't know why Katerina didn't play. You know, it's the play is getting so much faster, so you make the moves, you know, almost instantly. But I really wanted to keep this bishop. Yeah. And push yeah, because also like... the, the light square bishop is always a problem for white, for black, because it's always passive behind all the pawns. And it's not really doing much. Okay, but the game is evolving and it's going pretty fast here. Uh, light uh, won an exchange, uh, but there might be some compensation. Those knights are very active, attacking the pawn on d4. Also, b2 might be weak. Uh, mm -hmm. And the king, the white king is a bit exposed. You're absolutely right, Alessia. And you remember bef like before the start of the match, I said that Nana likes to sacrifice the exchange. Yeah, and she immediately sees this opportunity. She will bring her knight to e6, and uh, well, will not be easy to convert. Uh, I agree with you. I don't even know who is better in this position. Mm. Maybe white is still a bit better because uh, she managed to win the d5 pawn now. So, but I don't know. Black's king is safe. The knights are always tricky. I still have this nightmare from when I was a kid, when I had the queen, and then I lost it to a knight, to a lone knight. Mm -hmm. So very tricky. Yeah, and what is tricky is that here all the black pieces are really very active. Mm -hmm. And I, I, the, the rook, yeah, the rook on c two. Oh, he's losing the pawn on b two. Now pawns get ex the rook queen got exchanged. Ah, oh, now these pawns are a bit aggressive. Yes, once again, you really need the queens on the board when you're looking for some dynamic Initial. play. Yes, and Ekaterina and again. Not wins once again. And again. Uh, yeah, someone, yeah, it's it's very it's very hard to deal with one second of increment because you feel like you have the increment, but actually it's so few. There are some moments where you need to absolutely to pre-move in order to gain that seconds that is helping you. And even in that moment, you are not safe at all. So um, absolutely hard. And when the match is going this way, you start to lose confidence. I, you know, I, I know it myself personally, like you don't know like what opening to play anymore. Should I play E4, C4, D4? Like anything I try, it doesn't work. Mm -mm -mm. Nana switches once again uh, to the Grunfeld with the Bishop on G2. Uh, and actually what surprises me that uh, Katerina goes for these uh, active lines once again, because she could have chosen the symmetrical Grunfeld with c4, c6. It's a very calm, quiet line, very easy to play for black, but she still goes for the dynamic play, even though she's leading with uh, like nine and a half to two and a half. Yeah, but she's probably the, she, she doesn't true. think she's the one that needs to change approach because she's doing very well in this uh, in these lines. And so she says, okay, let's let's see what Nan is doing because uh, she can just keep doing as it she did right now and she's on fire. So let's have a look. You have this uh, very impressive knight, knight f3, knight e3. Uh, but once again, this knight on e3 is blocking your bishop on c1. That's exactly why Nana played b3. She needs to do something with her bishop. She needs to put it on b2. But on the other hand, look at this bishop on g7. Now it is looking good. Knight g4, hmm. great move. Uh, Katerina's idea was that after knight g4, bishop g4, and attacking your d4 pawn too many times, I will threaten bishop f3 and take on d4. Okay. So, you see, let's show. Let's show like if like uh, not bishop g2 is knight g4, bishop g4 is simply very difficult to defend. Okay, sorry. Instead of after knight yes, g4, here. no, it's of bishop, bishop b2. b2. Yes, knight g4. That was the idea. Bishop g4, and uh, you see, that's like I'm attacking the spawn too many times. Yeah. Yeah. So bishop b2 was played. Knight e3, f takes e3. 
with a very strange structure, bond structure, two double E bonds. And but still, hmm. you have to do something with your knight on E6 as well. Yeah, absolutely, because the knight is a bit misplaced and it needs to uh to join to join the game in some way. Maybe knight before knight c6 can be an atypical maneuver. Uh, no, this is actually a typical maneuver. You are absolutely right. But uh, well, mostly you bring the knight from b8 directly to c6. <laughs> the old maneuver in b8 a6 b4 c6 looks a bit artificial to me. <laughs> yes, but you know, in you have to find this balance during the opening because sometimes it's very concrete so you play c5 knight e6 you support this c5 because it's very important to play c5 in the grunfeld because you are fighting uh, for the center yes so mm -hmm. you white has a very strong center so you have to attack it so it's a very then okay you achieved it then you can like reroute your knight yeah and now rerouting the knight is even gaining a tempo against the queen mm -hmm. so i'm curious to see if knight before will be played uh, well, yeah, I think so. No, no, no. Yes, I think that's why Nana played actually rook c1. So after knight b4, she will be able to play queen b1. And then knight c6 will be met by rook c5. I will take your pawn. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's why. So it's important to take, yes. be careful. And f5, that's actually, I think, a very interesting move because she wants to play knight b4, queen b1, bishop e4. That was the idea. So she needs, and she also fixes this e3 pawn. I like this move very much. Mm -hmm. Very positional move, actually. Fixes the structure and has some uh, tactical ideas as well. Nana tried to avoid it, but still, bishop a3, knight b4. Hmm. Knight to e1, trying to change the bishop. Um... And to take with the knight, I think she wants bishop g2, queen like knight g2, knight f4. Then, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, let's see here. The white pawn structure is a bit weak. I was really, I was thinking if uh, black should be bringing the bishop to h6 in order to attack the uh, the pawn on e3. Um, oh, a5, or uh, just protecting the pawn on b4. And the knight is on f4, as you said, attacking the, the pawn on g2, that, which would be a fork. Uh, no, I think with the king would be a, a reasonable take because then you keep attacking uh, g6 and black protected with uh, queen f7, a, rook, a pair of rook of exchange, and white is bringing also the rook to the c file. Well, maybe Nana can actually make this work. The knight on the four is really very stable, and well, I control the c5, for, the c file for the moment. So, black has to go for e5, a breakthrough in the center, um, and this g6 pounds in the long run could be very weak. So, bishop e4, it takes a four, and maybe queen e6 here. Okay, yeah. Run sent uh, rookie five first. And there we have three minutes to go before this format is finished. So we mm -hmm. might be able still to see one game. Uh, let's see. Unless this game is not lasting under Strange. the moves. Because uh, rook d5, I think that uh, Katerina missed rookie two. Rookie two and queen d5. She had this tactical idea, but okay. Oh. Queen a pawn, yes. Uh, Okay, now that this, we are in a queen end game, actually those kind of endings can really last a lot of time because you keep giving check, 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 check. Yeah. And it's always, okay, for the first time, one of the first time, Katarina Lagno has less time. And now, wow, Nana is changing the queen and is oh, answering no. in this pawn this end game. Winning. Yes, because I will go with my king to g5 as well. I had this opportunity, yeah. so this is actually winning. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Because your black is having a, a, a pawn, an extra pawn on the queen side, but after a four, white will just not touch anything, and it's not just, just not touch, just don't take, and there is no way for white to create a pass pawn, and white is just much faster to promote. Uh -huh. 
Uh, yes, this was a very unusual blunder on uh, Katerina Lagno's behalf, yes, but not so easy to see because you need to transpose um, to the yeah. uh, end game. Okay, Nana wins. Very Nana wins and this is the last game. So uh, there is just one minute uh, 26 before the C plus one section um is over katerina lagno is bringing more light to her room <laughs> and she's trying to get some inspiration from the outside <laughs> well they repeat the same opening <clears throat> she crushed uh, nana in the previous game so let's see once again this bishop b5 idea bishop d7 actually because i wanted to take uh, on c6 Mm -hmm. okay, Nana goes for the mo most concrete line now, knight d4 immediately, and if knight d4, then cd4 and rook c8 is coming, so she doesn't want to change the structure in the center. Yeah. So what do we have here? Knight e2 is a very nice move, and I want to play c3. Yeah, c3 and maybe also d4. Yeah, and c3 is played, uh, mm -hmm. the knight goes exchange on f3. And I think uh, it's not so easy to play the move uh, the move d4 because uh -huh. e4 is hanging. That's why black went for f5. But here you also need to be careful how to continue. You want to play queen e1. That's what I wanted to say. Queen h4, bishop h6, and rook h2. And c4 is exactly uh, the reaction I was hoping for. You you want to attack, but then I am trying to show you that your e4 pawn is weak, so mm -hmm. c4 immediately undermines the pawn structure. And um, well, here Katerina has to switch gears actually with white. It means that okay, the opening didn't really go as I planned. I no longer have a mating attack, so I have to switch gears and uh, well to equalize, like to play calmly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how is um, oh my god now uh, the f two pawn is a problem no mm -hmm. ooh mate knight h three k queen g one oh no oh no yes so that was let's show, let's show like at least this wow beautiful mate, no? could be possible yes yeah of course we go we go to show this beautiful mate and no matter where the this ah, yes, is a check. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter where the king is going and we just have made beautiful beautiful this is near to the um sometimes you give mate on f2 um but okay wow beautiful finish we're happy because this match is getting more exciting another victory for nana so mm -hmm. there is just a difference of five points all right my dear so guys we are gonna have a short break and then we will be back to the last section one plus one fire on the board and let's see if nana is able to do a big big comeback see you soon
And here we are, we are back. Before starting with the last section, a quick shout out to the incoming World Championship coming in November. And just guys, you should know that chess.com has the full rights about the video section. So, and as a cool exclusivity and they will be showing on Twitch. So stay tuned, November is incoming. The big match between uh, Carson and Nepo will be extremely exciting. But here we have another match, extremely exciting, and between Nana Zagnitze and Katerina Lagno. The current score is nine and a half to four and a half, and now we are going to have the bullet section. Do you think we will see a comeback of Nana, Almira? Well, it is really possible because I was looking at Katerina and, you know, especially the last two games have shown that she simply collapsed. You know, it's uh, I know it like every professional pl player knows this moment when there's something changed, maybe your sugar level drops, you start simply, um, your brain becomes foggy. And in Blitz, it's very important, you know, not to blunder in this way. So I think that uh, uh, you see Katerina was trying to regain her composure, she's tired. Yeah. And so she um, mentally is preparing herself for this very difficult exercise, which is the bullet, you know, I wanted to make a joke, you know, that even for myself, you know, we're calling the paramedics after the end of this match. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I really leave these games like I was playing, like I'm playing them myself. So let's see. Yeah, it started. We have D4 again, but I cut line, a solid approach. Bishop uh, D2 yeah, and Bishop, Bishop G2, C4. Maybe C6 here. No, she still goes for G8, C4. We've seen this line many times. Uh, um, she goes for the immediate C5, Knight C4, Bishop E6. And we see, we've seen Knight E3, yes, previously. she, But with the B, Knight A6, so now the Bishop is on E6. Everything is going so quickly. Um, yeah. Especially Katerina Lagno is, is is keeping lots of time on the on the clock. Instead, Nana is already investing. She's already twenty seconds down, and this we are talking about one second of increment. So it's important to make fast moves. If not, you will be in trouble. Yes, but once again, how do you make fast moves in the position where almost every move is based on a cal calculation? You know, if you play the opening, that's why I was thinking maybe in bullet you should have this approach, like play d3, c3, bishop b4, e3, you know, to play the openings where you could easily make 20, 30 moves. Yeah, that's And true. I think that is probably the perfect strategy. But on the other hand, how can you make this against the Grundfeld? You know, so maybe, uh, well, try and find another move order. Here yeah, I think it's very important to choose an opening uh, that uh, where you really um, where you don't have to calculate is not so tricky because if not it's very hard you might go wrong and if you invest so much time you will be in time pressure immediately she's already in time pressure 20 seconds okay knight should go on d6 here not on f6 it was a very important move so this knight on d6 protects on b7 and also goes to c4 so maybe uh, b5 is possible right now yeah, this is a very balanced situation. The knight on c4 is um, is active, and okay, but black is rerouting it. No, now I think I just she simply wanted to repeat the position. I think she said, okay, knight c4, then uh, you see she exchanges the rook, so she wants to uh, play, well, sort of an equal end game. Yeah, but this knight, the knight, I call the knight the swindle piece. So the piece that can always do a fork with a pawn and then another one. So it's, it's but tricky. But when you have two knights, they sort of neutralize the swindle power, no? Like <laughs> well, It depends. Actually, they might be double because you can swindle both with both sides, with white, with black. <laughs> yes, but mathematically, I really hope that this is, is a very simple, you know, draw. And um... yeah, let's see. So maybe I can simply. Yeah, now I think they have to change the knights yeah, because knight before and, uh, and that should you be see here. Point. You need to calculate. That's that's not an easy decision. You, you need to calculate the pawn endings. So absolutely, first you know that knight c4 is a draw, but when you are having ten seconds, uh, it's not so easy. Yeah. But let's see. But now it's again not so easy for black. Well, you just have to keep this, uh, you know, position. Yeah. 
So you always have to uh, to have the square, so the white king will not be able to penetrate. Yeah, but one second. Mm. My one God, second for Naga. Okay, no, they will repeat. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's moving with she's moving with really okay repetition. Okay, okay good, good. The time is always so tricky. Okay, so we have ten to five for Katerina Lagno. She's leading of five points and there are still 21 minutes to go in this bullet section. So we need Nana absolutely to start winning. It's nearly a, a, a match point for Katerina Lagno. Well, last, this last, so Nana repeats the same variation and um, Katerina here goes for this type of structure, knight d4, cd4, as I told you in the previous game, rook c8 is going to be played. So uh, how to characterize it? You know, the knight on e2 is not optimal. Sometimes you can improve it and play king h1, knight g1, knight f3. You see, artificially I improve my knight. But you also can play f5, knight f4, knight d5, and that's mm -hmm. exactly what uh, Katerina is doing. There are a few options, but don't forget that your pawn on c2 is very weak, so yeah, you have yeah. to protect it as well. But I like the idea knight f4, knight d5, um, maybe even f6 at one point. g4, incredible, you know, such an avalanche of pawns, you know, uh, it looks... Um, you know, when you're faced with all these pounds, uh, you're really scared. Yeah, yeah. And in bullet, more than in other time control, uh, the initiative is extremely important. Extremely important. So let's see, rook c5, then you can double and triple on the c file. So Nana's idea is to play queen c7, rook c8. Yeah. And to okay, rook c1, pawn. probably mm -hmm. rook c8. Okay, but rook c8 is still might be a dangerous to leave the f file. I don't know if something like f take g6 and then rook f7 could be an idea. Oh, queen f3. Yes, she's, I think she just wants to give it all up and to concentrate yes, on some attacking chances. Mm -mm -mm -mm. She wants to play h4, h5, exactly, to open everything. Yeah. I don't know why Nana played bishop e5. I think rook c2 was... Uh, um, yeah, rook d8 is very strange. Wait, where's this rook c2, rook c2, queen c2, rook c1, the, king, the rook on c8 was actually hanging. Mm -hmm. But then maybe queen d2 and checks. Okay, it was complicated to calculate in bullet. You know, I'm still treating this like a classical game and the position has changed. Katerina managed to take all the pawns right now. And what is going on? Yeah, now the queen, the queen might go to g4. Ooh, exactly. Ooh. But not but queen h5 now. No, but oh now God, white is losing, is. black is losing a piece. And so now it's over. I think queen g4 was such a good opportunity for black. Yes, yeah, now... you're absolutely right. But so now I understand how difficult is it to play bullet. You know, while I'm trying to explain something, I would already lose on time, I think, several times. <laughs> so I can't. Yeah, exactly. Understand. The pressure is on the players and yeah, uh, and now it's so few time. Oh my god, with 0 0.04. She has, she has less than one second. It's very important for us that you remind us of the time because I simply don't see these numbers. <laughs> yeah, and I see she's moving with 1.4, 1 1.2. 1 uh, the time 1.2. Oh no way. Oh no way. It seems like zero, but yeah, it's so hard. It's really so hard. When you are on playing with one second, it's just impossible. Well, just now, impossible. you know, this bullet, I feel like, especially when Alessia is commentating, like I feel like we are at the big stadium, you know. We are supporting some Russia, you know, Georgia match, and you know, we are the football commentators, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but really at the at the end, I feel like. Um, it's really a lot. It's I feel like Nana is wants always to play good moves, no? Exactly. And the problem is that with one second of increment, uh, is really a matter of milliseconds. And once you your mouse is even a bit too slow, not smooth, is not moving smooth, you lose on time. So you cannot let yourself in that situation because it's clear that after ten moves, one moment your mouse is slipping away and. Uh, but you know, on the other hand, Alessia, I wanted to say that um, 
here we see this um, difference between um, the professional player culture and, for example, the new wave of streamers, the new wave of blitz exercise. Professional chess players and, um, like I say, see Nana, I think they're not used to bullet format. That's why yeah. even though this tournament offers them an incredible opportunity of trying like of like playing this format and this is a very difficult exercise but as for my personal experience I know that the bullet could never enter the scope of my training it was mm -hmm. simply harmful for my chest and as considered by my trainers yeah so I feel that uh, even Katerina or Nana, you know, they they're not really used to this uh, type of uh, like of fast games. It's I th I really believe that you need to have a lot of training. Yeah, no, no, I agree. Is is different than 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 is far way different from from classical chess. Actually, there is a series, uh, some videos on chess.com done by Aman from Chessbra. Uh, that explain some tricks and how to deal with bullet. And, and oh. sometimes mm -hmm. even they, they suggest, for example, to even sacrifice an exchange in some situation that even if it's not in classical chess, you will not do. Sometimes if you have initiative and you can pressure, uh, it can, ooh. Yes, Katerina actually, while you were explaining, you know, I had a look at the board and Katerina actually like won very convincingly. This yeah, game. let's see this this yeah. last moment. Queen F2 is attacking the bishop. And yeah, if white this is red, moving. Uh, an exchange up actually in this position. Yeah. She can simply bring rook B8, you know, and with the idea of mating on, yes, exactly. It doesn't really matter. Or rook B2 then. Yeah. It depends on white moves, of course, but this position is hopeless. Okay, let's have a look what is happening now. Okay, this opening once again. So, once again, so they are really going. They really pre prepare their opening, and they believe in their preparation. They are going for it because we didn't see much changes here. Any changes? Yes, Nana tried to play five in one game, and that's it. Yeah, they straight. They stay true to their preparation, and I really like it. You know, um, uh, it's it's also a very important training for them. They see what ideas work, like, and they can use it in classical chess as well. If they yeah. feel the position, so uh, you see now she used another plan, Katerina. She moved like she bring, bring, brought the king, the queen to f two, and the knight to g three. She wants to play h four, h five. Yeah, h4, h5, and h4 is on the board. I feel like, yeah, look at the time difference. 50 seconds against 20. 30 seconds more are so helpful here. Yeah, I have the feeling that Nana didn't adapt to this bullet. You know, you it's very difficult. Yes, first you play 5 plus 1, 3 plus 1, and then this is a huge change, like 1 plus 1. She didn't adapt to this uh, change of gears. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, bishop c6. Mm -hmm. I think Katerina is a much more um, practical also in this bullet version. She 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 make moves faster. She's once again a class. This is a pure example of a, a classical school style player. So that's why she like moves come to her easily. You know, she knows where the best like square for the piece, how to improve the piece, which piece to exchange. So then it becomes intuitive. But yeah. let's see, I feel here once again, Nana uh, has some initiative. You see this pawn on e2, queen e3, the king. She has one second. Actually, she has one second once again. You know, all what I said doesn't oh. really matter. Yes, she lost once again. I was oh, trying no. to analyze it rationally, but it doesn't really matter. Yes, unfortunately, time is the, like, is the most important factor here yeah now it feels really hard for nana she has eight points to recover and 12 minutes to go so she has to win Almost one game team. every minute more or less so she needs to win it fast <laughs> let's so see it's sort of a different fast and furious scenario you know this <laughs> exactly um Okay, Katerina Wadimov. Chess version. 
Yes, Katerina Lagno has a very comfortable position after the opening, as you can see. She, well, she um, has the central pawns. Nana has to attack the central pawns with c4, but uh, Katerina doesn't have any problem at all. All her yes. pieces are on perfect squares. So bishop d5, what to do? Knight c4 here. Maybe knight c5. No, knight c5 gives the e5 pawn. So not knight c5. Can I play e4? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, e4, the knight is going, uh, the knight is going to b4. Mm -hmm. It may be here, knight c5, I wanted to play. So Katerina plays a6. Ooh. What happened? Oh, bishop a3. Look at the queen. It's gone. Oh no. no There's a knight. What is, going on? Oh. Oh. what is going on? Oh, oh my no, god. again? Hello? <laughs> oh my god, that's incredible. The queen is hanging so long. And white is attacking again, but now the queen is escaped. Oh no, I cannot believe this. Well, I'm completely speechless because I feel, you know, you have this cobra in front of you and it's hypnotizes you. You know, you have the queen, but you don't say, I don't really understand. <laughs> like, oh my God, the nerves, you know, it's, uh, it's, um, that's the first time I see, I think the queen on priest for so many moves. I'm um, under shock. <laughs> are we sure Thanks. that this was the position? <laughs> It's incredible. I'm sure that this is the position and that this was the position, but it's, it's incredible. I can't believe it. Maybe at every, like at each move, they were pre-moving and they said, okay, didn't take, she will take the queen back. I pre-moved, but she still didn't take the queen away, you know, and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's absolutely, absolutely insane. And this can happen just, you know, this can happen just in uh, bullet chess. Yeah. That's why I love bullet chess. <laughs> oh no this is like uh, i mean i'm too old for this stuff <laughs> my heart my heart and <laughs> uh, one day you will win the bullet chess championship of chess.com <laughs> oh yes this is uh, such a long way <laughs> such a long <laughs> shot i believe okay but now nana is winning so she as you said she needs to win almost every game so she will go for it she will go for it in Every game. Yeah. Okay, we have a mate on the board. Checkmate. So, New game. Six Katerina, to thirteen. Nine yes, minutes Katerina to go. Needs to make them last also longer, is what I understood. Yes. So because yes. you have very limited time at the end. Yeah, exactly. There are less than nine minutes right now. Eight minutes, fifty seconds. So she has absolutely to to try not to lose and or and try to keep the go the game going longer. Yeah, so, so again another Grand Prix variation. Yes, we have this uh, uh, thematical battle. Yes, Grunfeld against the Grand Prix some Sicilians. Uh, it's a very interesting match actually as a, as a player. Uh, it doesn't matter if there are blunders, it's absolutely natural, but uh, it's very interesting for me to watch. Because I've picked up already a few ideas, you know, I somehow uh, will play a tournament, the World Cup. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can use some of those ideas. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck there. Yeah, well, if we will manage, you know, to get there, it's like... Some, <laughs> yeah, of course. During the pandemics, it's very easy to plan something. I was really hoping that things will get back to normal, but it takes some time. And I'm I really think we are slowly on the right way. I'm tomorrow getting the second dose of vaccine. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Of course. So Katerina Lagno goes for the same plan. Yes, knight g3, h4, h5. She wants to weaken uh, black's king. And I always feel that Nana reacts very well against this plan, but then she blunders something. Hmm. She takes time, that's what you said. She takes time, she makes the best move, but unfortunately, this is not enough. When she's like down to one second, you know, uh, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I yeah, really I like the way she's doing a she brilliant reacts. job. Nani's doing a brilliant job here. Yeah. So, 
I had this idea in mind to play knight g4 and queen h7 and to bring the queen, you know, to the h file and to try to mate. But she yeah. won uh, the pawn on e4. Still, this is not clear at all because king safety is very important. So there are some ideas for white once again. Yeah, and both kings are very weak. Oh my god, and now we're getting even weaker. The g file is open, but maybe black is running faster. And so the white, the white king is feel a bit embarrassed there. Yeah, is oh maybe oh wow, with the bishop d three. Oh no, no, no. No bishop d three, queen d three. Yes, yes. I saw this. Yes, I can see your potential, Alessia. You know, <laughs> you are you are like uh, this attacking player. You know, who is uh, who sees every tactical idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But sometimes then doesn't work. Okay. Ooh, it was probably queen, queen d1. d1. Yes. Yeah. Queen d1, queen f1. As you can see, not so easy to spot during the bullet. And none is four seconds. There's five seconds left. And that's, uh, yeah. And now we are in a pawn end game, but look at the king. Mom, yes, but f6 <laughs> was a very nice move. You know, you give up the pawn in order to take the pawn and f4. Mm -hmm. So they're still playing. Katya will simply just create the pass pawn and then bring the king. Yeah, this is just over. All right. So we have five minutes to go. So just a miracle could save Nana here, I feel. Yes, actually, this uh, score, 14-6, does not reflect, you know, the true course of the games. Uh, yeah. I feel that like Nana... Uh, could easily have like, if not two, but two or three points more. Then this match uh, could easily go like both ways. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I feel like this bullet, uh, this bullet version is a bit harder uh, for uh, for the 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 type of player that we have seen. No, Nana is playing really very well, but then in time trouble, uh, she's suffering more than than Katerina. And and so the bullet is really not helping her. Yes, let's see. This is actually one of the positions which we still haven't seen in this variation with uh, c4, d4 pawns and c5, you know, uh, once again attacking the center uh, with the bishop on b2 and knight f3, knight d2, which is a very uh, uh, solid approach for white. Um, I cannot move my d pawn because I will lose the bishop on b2. Yeah. So uh, white has to. I was thinking, is there a possibility as to play knight e5 and f4? But now d4 is hanging and d5 is a very nice move. Yeah, and maybe also c5 then? Oh, c5, I wouldn't dare. I don't know. Like. Um... Yeah, maybe the pawn are over pushed then. I feel like. Well, you have a very nice central, like pawns d5. You have a lot of space here. Yeah, then it's always, it's always the question, can I protect this uh, overextended center or, or is weak? Okay, now uh, she plays c5, but with a tempo because she's attacking the knight. Uh -huh. Okay, maybe queen, okay. Oh, yes, if, changing everything. Now you think queen c3. It's a very nice uh, tactical idea. Tactic, tactic, puzzle rush. And now a knight might get to e6 and is a deadly knight. Yeah, and then maybe d6. There are many ideas. Still h4, h5 is a very powerful <laughs> idea. Oh, g5. Beautiful. Well, here certainly Nana has the upper hand and she, she needs not to blunder in this game. She needs to stay alive in the match and to just to put like protect it. like rook d1, yeah. you know, to protect her pieces. Uh, queen e5, I think, and it's over. Yeah. F7 and then queen g7. Boom. Beautiful. Yeah, and Katerina is resigning. So we might see our last game today. We there are two minutes to go. If mm -hmm. this game is uh, we'll be playing till the last second. This might be our last game, guys. And we are going to interview the players, right, Alicia? Yes, after yes. the 
after the, the match. So please stay tuned. It's uh, okay here. I like even if it's our last game, I still wanted to explain to you that this one one of the positions with which we haven't seen here. Uh, Nana allowed for white to take on c6. You have the c6 pawn. And uh, Katerina is actually using a very thematical plan. She plays queen a1, queen h4. Uh, normally, you were supposed to play, like from what I remember that I studied, you play bishop d2, b3 first. You first stabilize your queen side, and then you go for queen a1, queen h4. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't really like this. Uh, knight a4, this knight on the rim is dim, but um, yeah, that's true. Uh, Maybe the knight can come back after b3, knight b2, knight c4, trying to come back. Queen got exchanged. Yeah, it's, I, I have the feeling it's very just too slow. Yes, yeah, so it's still Katerina is leading in this match, so uh, she can do pretty much anything in this game. So the g6 pawn is weak, e5 is necessary. So probably yes, take on e5, uh, knight takes e5, and if bishop takes, then f takes, and you will have a lot of problems with your bishop on c8. Yeah, that's true, the bishop looks closed. Um, let's see, let's see here, theoretically, why should uh, black should try to uh, activate the bishop because this bishop on b7 is blocked but it's not so easy maybe sh black should start to push pawns well ideally like if queens would be on board you need to play b5 c4 sacrifice the pawn or open the position but uh, here you can simply play like the end game slowly c4, c4 open the good. diagonal so what to do? maybe d4 here Okay, d4 was played, but uh, maybe an idea can also be bishop b7 and then c5 or c5 c5 first. Yes, this is the right idea. You're absolutely right. So um, now you yeah. the bishop are getting some good diagonals, and, and now also Katarina Lagno is in time trouble. You see, ten seconds. They're actually in. She has less time. Yes, but it's very difficult also for her to. Um, probably to motivate herself. You know, she knows that this is the last game. Uh, she yeah, won yeah. the match, so it's not so easy to find the motivation to continue. And Nana is actually playing a brilliant game here. Look at these yeah. bishops and the pawns, everything. She she won a very nice game. Like she will win. Uh, don't talk too early <laughs> but yeah it's a nice victory and as you can see here the time is a zero 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 it means okay. that the match is over 14 to 8 points big congratulations to Katerina Lagno that advanced to the semi-final of this event women's speed chess championship organized by chess.com and FIDA so, so your prediction, your prediction was right. You said that uh, you thought that uh, Katerina Lagno was slightly uh, a slight favorite. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she won the match. So you see, good profit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gave you the odds, you know. Then <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because I know, like I've played the the girls so many times. I really experienced. I have the painful experience on playing them myself, so I really know how strong they are. Oh yeah. All right, guys. So we're gonna listen directly from them. How was how hard was this? Uh, this match so we will come back in a short moment and we will have the player here with us for an interview be right back
And here we are, we are back and we are with the two players. Welcome Katerina Lagno and welcome Nana Zagnitze. Uh, of course, big congratulations to you, Katerina, for winning this match with 14 to 8. And uh, Nana, you 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 had you had a beautiful last game. Um, how how do you feel about this match? Um, first of all, hello everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, in the beginning, I think um, I lost several games. I mean, in the beginning. So after that, I had a couple of winning games, which I spoiled. Absolutely, with the white, especially, absolutely winning game. And uh, after that, I don't know. I mean, uh, Katia, I think, plays uh, uh, stronger uh, online blitz than me. So, yeah, results, I think, uh, speaks itself. So, yeah. But Nana, somehow yeah. I believe that you didn't have uh, so much experience in, in bullet. You know, I tried to explain that as professional chess players, we don't really train in bullet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not that ex uh, experienced. Uh, overall, I mean, online chess is not a cup of tea for me. But uh, yeah, uh, I I'm trying to improve, you know, because I, uh, recently I started to play regularly online, bullet and uh, uh, blitz games also, and I think I'm improving. <laughs> But uh, but uh, yeah, this time it wasn't enough, I guess. <laughs> uh, Katerina, congratulations. You know, this was actually quite an impressive performance. So tell us a little bit more about your opening preparation, because it seems that it was very thematical match. I enjoyed it very much. A lot of ideas. Maybe I can use one or two. Uh, so tell me, like, tell us our no, I mean, I mean, better not, better not. Don't use it. Don't, don't try it at home. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we played so so many times with Nana already. So that's uh, okay uh, with white and with black. So yes, of course, I prepared something, but then uh, uh, it was also, you know, uh, some unexpected lines we had. So well. Anyway, it was a it was a tough match, and I was uh, Nana was right. She was winning in several games that she couldn't win, and of course after that I, I won. I started to win game after game. Yes, I I felt like okay, it's, you know it it gives me some confidence. And a question to Katerina, do you think there is, uh, you did a different preparation for the different time control because five plus one, three plus one, one plus one, they are very different between each other. Did you have a different approach to them? No, but uh, as you could see, no. <laughs> <laughs> I play e4 and uh, after d4, I played knight f6, g6, so <laughs> nothing special. But I noticed that you moved really extremely fast at the beginning. Uh, as you know, already in the end of the match, I was uh, I was quite tired. I, I think also, Nana also, and uh, the game, uh, the last game of three and one time control, uh, it show, showed it. Yes, <laughs> very clear that I missed uh, knight f2 check and B, queen f b6 check. But uh, well, it's blitz and it happens. Uh, so I just tried to, you know, to to be focused, to stay focused till the end, and yeah, and it worked out. Well, and I I had the feeling that once again that uh, well, to play those formats, you really need to be physically very strong. So I wanted to ask both players, Nana, how do you work out actually? You no, know, how do you prepare for your chess tournaments to stay in shape? Um. I'm trying to to do some exercises regularly. I mean, I think every chess player do the same when you play uh, on a high level tournaments. You, you have to do. I mean, you have to be uh, fit. So yeah, nothing special. I think uh, everybody everybody do more the same. I mean, some fitness, some running. Yeah. Yes, I know that Katerina, she mostly runs, yes? Yes, but now uh, there is a, here's a bicycle time. 
<laughs> ah, okay. So after the match, you will you will train. <laughs> uh probably tomorrow today i'm a bit already a bit lazy you know <laughs> and it's uh, and a bit too late but uh, yes the, during the summer i usually i i like uh, you know to go outside uh, but right in moscow right, right now it's too hot it's plus 30 already in the in the morning so you have to be quick you know if you want to go outside it's like uh, <laughs> you have to start to do something at 7 a.m not later <laughs> but it's very good to keep in shape and actually during the pandemic to use a bicycle at home was a very easy way to keep uh, fit and to keep doing some exercise that is always important for everybody uh, but also for a competitive event uh, so I think that um, uh, I have a last question. Katerina, you are going to face the winner between uh, Arika Dronovali and Anna Mucicuk. Is there one opponent that you uh, that you're more scared of? Scared. <laughs> <laughs> Katerina is no, not, but I'm not already scared of anything. <laughs> Too experienced to, to be scared. Okay. I like to hear I'm not scared of anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, no, no, scared. It's not the right word. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you're a sportsman, uh, you, you just you cannot be scared. You just uh, you know it's not allowed. <laughs> no, I just uh, I I will uh, watch the match and uh, okay, let's uh, the strongest win and uh, it will be. Uh, Anyway, it will be interesting match. So, and I wish both of players good luck. And uh, okay, we'll see. Alicia, I just wanted to add that when you have four children, uh, I think you're not scared of anything. <laughs> 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 you, 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 you're prepared for everything. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So, thank you both for joining. Big congratulations again to Katerina. And thank you, Nana, for taking part to this Women's Speeches Championship. And yeah, we wish you both a good continuation of your day. Thank you. All right. So, Almira, we are going to have, uh, this is here, we see now the bracket of mm -hmm. the, the tournament. So, we, as, we, as we said, Arika Dronavali is going to face Anna Muzicuk. And then we also have other semi uh, other quarterfinals tomorrow. Um, so uh, this is such an impressive lineup, actually. You know, now that I had a look, uh, I'm really looking forward. I will actually watch this match between Hu Yifan and uh, Bibi Sara Sobaeva. I think that it will be very interesting. Absolutely, absolutely. And let's remind uh, everyone that tomorrow, actually, two quarterfinals are taking place. First, between Uifan and uh, uh, Bibisara Aswabeya, uh, Aswabeya. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the semifinals between Arika Dronovalli and Anna Muzicic. So um, just one after each other. So stay tuned. They are starting at 1 p.m. Central European time. And they're going on for lots of hours. Uh, and then, of course, the last, the last will be on Monday 28th. So there is a big, big, big schedule here. Chesterscom is, keep, is keeping everyone busy. Uh, Productor, commentator, everyone. Uh, but there are really exciting match going on. So, guys, appointment to tomorrow. Thank you so much, Amira. It was a really pleasure to commentate with you. Thank you so much uh, like for making it so easy for me. You know, this, as you know, it's my first, you know, chess.com experience. And uh, I really didn't feel like we comment did commentary for hours. So thanks. That was, that was very smooth also for me. So I was really happy. I also want to thank the chat, our producer. And thank you, everyone. See you, see you soon. See you soon, guys. <laughs>